And hello, folks. We're here. Um, hello, folks. All here, four of us uh, for the uh, first ever uh, Roll20 20 20 game of game. Dialect. And uh, we're excited to see everyone here. Uh, and with me today are uh, Jay Lee, Sharon Biswas, and Amber Dean. Uh, so if you all could give a quick little introduction to yourselves, I think that would be a nice thing for the viewers. Um, I'm Hakan. Um, I, uh, I co-designed Dialect with uh, Catherine Himes. And uh, here, uh, Jay is one of the uh, uh, contributing backdrop writers, so she's also in the book. Um, and yeah, um, whoever would like, if you could just say a few words about yourself. Hi, I'm Jay. Uh, I'm a LARPer and LARP writer, and um, I had the pleasure of playtesting some of the super early versions of Dialect. There was the one where we were in a zombie park uh, in the middle of Times Square. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that was delightful. I remember that. Where, that, was, like, that was still the weirdest game of dialect I've played since then. Yeah, because it was like the compound, but we were like, the compound was to keep the rest of the world out or something, wasn't it? It was to keep us in so that like we didn't infect the rest of the world with zombieism. So we had like our own unique cult zombie culture and all of the like skyscrapers in Times Square like looked down on us. Yep, <laughs> exactly. It was pretty great. All right. And Sharon? Uh, so I'm Sharung Biswas. I am a writer, game designer, and artist in New York City. And I I played a, not the earliest version. I did play an early version of Dialect run by Eric Mersman, uh, and that was really fun. And then I, I played it a couple more times with some friends. And I was fortunate enough to have one of my games run by Hakan recently at a convention, and that made me super excited. I like uh, Hakan and Catherine's game so much. Uh, and that was uh, really fancy and cool. Yeah, that was really fun. That was at the Language and Play conference that we uh, co-hosted at the heart of the Deer Corn in Olympia. And Amber. Hello, I'm Amber Dean. I'm one half of Secret Orbit Games. Uh, plenty of unpublished, really great games. And actually the reason that Rick, my partner and I got into gaming was uh, playtesting Kate McCann's games. So stoked to be here. Oh, I remember that. What, what what event was that at? That was at the... Um... Come out and play SF. Come out and play SF. Yeah, that was right. That was uh, three years ago, something like that. Maybe a little longer. Yeah, we did not know games could be like this. <laughs> now that we know, we're pretty hooked, so... This has been great. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Everdeen hosts uh, uh, a game uh, event that we always really enjoy going to in the area and uh, have um, some great designs that we are really excited about too. I especially like the misfortune tellers that you see just like floating around all the different conventions now, which are super cute. Also, I just discovered Gallery View on Zoom, and it's amazing where I can see all four of us simultaneously. If you haven't used oh, it, dude. Gallery View. Isn't it great? Yeah, this is awesome. Thank I you. just discovered it. Okay, cool. <sighs> that sounds riveting. Uh, all right, cool. Um, so let me uh, let me get us started and drop us into the uh, gameplay view for everyone watching. Uh, and uh, we were discussing what backdrop we want to play. Uh, if you're not already familiar with dialect, um, the basic premise of the game is that we're going to be making a we're going to be telling a community through uh, the story of a community through the lens of their language. Uh, so return of the game, we're going to see how the language changes uh, and then go through the entire life cycle of the community through that language. Uh, Dialects Roll20 integration is something that we're um, just finishing up. Uh, it will be launching on uh, April 26th. Uh, and this is a chance to see a little bit about how that works. Because it's a stream where we're zoomed into a particular part of the play space. Um, and we probably won't be moving it around too much just to keep things a little uh, calibrated. Um, but you'll be able to see uh, how it works and like what the what the integration looks like as well. All right, so let's get into the gameplay view. All right, cool. Uh, so the um, the backdrop that we decided to play with for this game is uh, written by Kira McGron. And it's 2081 Solar Slums. Uh, and we can just start with the, uh, the backdrop description and then go from there. Um, one thing that's 
occurring to me real quick. Would it be easy for you folks if I shared in my um, screen view for the other streamers? Would you like to see that so you can actually see what's going on in real time, or is this comfortable for you? Someone said, yes, awesome. But I don't know if that's to that question. No, no, I meant, I meant to you folks. Would you like oh, to see I this? I would rather see you, I think, because we can see the stream view if we're in Twitch, right? Uh, yeah, it'll be a few seconds delayed, but uh, but you'll be able to see it. If you ever do want to see like uh, the real-time view or something. I, I have my Roll20 open, so that should be fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. For yeah. me, at least. All right, sounds good. So I think we're ready to get started, then. Um, so uh, how every game of dialect starts is uh, by picking the backdrop, and the backdrop that we picked is Kira's uh, Cyberpunk backdrop, uh, which is 2081 Solar Slums. And uh, we'll start off by uh, reading the description for the backdrop, and then we'll get going. Uh, so, when the weather in the U.S. became too harsh to live outside, corporations built high-tech biodomes so people could survive. Anyone unwilling or unable to work for them and live by their laws was stuck in urban slums full of pollutants, fake food, solar burn, and gangs. It's here where we live, a group of rebels who refuse to cave to the cultural suicide that is corporate life. Among the people who are just trying to survive in this consumerist dictatorship is a resistance of competent cyborgs and hackers who oppose corporate life. Here in these neon city streets, you gotta talk fast to make friends, and you need to prove your cred to be trusted. So that's the basic outline of uh, the setting in which we're going to play, right? Uh, what we, uh, the next step of actually creating the world in which we're going to play the game uh, is by uh, creating three aspects. These are going to be the fundamental building blocks uh, from which we actually generate all the language during play, uh, and we generate them communally, right? As we make them, uh, we'll put them on the board, uh, with these little cards uh, so we can keep track of them. And then as we build language, uh, we will take the uh, different language items uh, and place them on those aspects. Uh, right. So if you folks see me kind of manipulating down the roll 20 now, uh, that's kind of what that looks like, right? And if you're following along in the book, it's page 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good book. Oh yeah? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, Okay, so uh, let's get started with the aspect questions. Uh, so, artificial shade. How have you survived in the harsh UV heat and sun poisoning that affects the city streets? Ooh. Yeah, so what, what could we have done to, uh, to get that? And it's established that it is a form of shade, is it? Or... So it's called artificial shade, but it, I don't think it means it needs to be a form of shade, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I think it could be like a, a very loose interpretation of that. Oh, what if, what if we, there's a genetically engineered, okay, what if the rich people, the corporation, like the, the rich people, when they venture out, they're all genetically engineered at the fetus level to, to resist the UV. What if we have to keep applying um, every few days this like, bacterium or this like slime kind of thing um like a sunblock you put a dollop and it like infects all of you and that's how we um cool does it actually like is like affects like the uh, uh like our skin or our dna in some way maybe or is it, it just like an outer coat brain. maybe it affects our brains it affects our brains, so it's not yeah, like protecting it, us as much as it's like making us feel like we're protected. Is that what it's I that think? Like? What if it, it protects us, but it also produces like the the protective layer it produces is like neurotoxic very slightly, so it makes us feel kind of like groggy, and ultimately we have shorter lifespans because we apply this neurotoxin to us all the time. Mm -hmm. What if it makes us tense? Like Ooh. it makes us more prone to conflict. Yeah, it makes us, yeah, yeah, it like, ooh, it, it, okay, what if it like reacts with our, um, with our endocrine system? 
and like <laughs> makes a constant, very small, low level throughput of epinephrine in our system. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, epinephrine would cause like tenseness yeah. and hostility or? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like um, what's it called? Flight or, so we're always at a low level. Yeah, okay, of so we're always <laughs> slightly like activated and slightly nervous in addition to being in abject poverty. Like we're also like biochemically anxious. Yeah, yeah. so. Like, so we the, sleep the, 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 the toxin produced by this protozoan, let's say, both is good against UV, but as it absorbs UV, it transforms into an epinephrine-like molecule that is absorbed into Okay, you are totally the techno-babble person of this team. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Is it cumulative? Like, young people aren't that affected by it, but as you get older in the society, so the oldest, our, our elders are like, ah! that sounds great uh so it's kind of like this yeah uh, like someone said in chat i think some sort of like umbrella slime it's is what it sounds like right? <laughs> uh that has this like um yeah fight or flight response in us. okay cool so i said uh low level fight flight uh which is kind of the byproduct of this slimy mixture that we have to apply <laughs> sound good yeah. It's like changeling, except instead of getting gradually more jaded, you get gradually more high strung. Yeah. Exactly. I'm right. playing a changeling lot in a few weeks. <laughs> Sorry, off topic. No, no. Uh, cool. So, next one is slum savvy. Uh, with only each other to rely on and corporations oppressively controlling access to needed goods, what questionable activities must we do to survive? Hmm. <sighs> Hmm. So if we want to continue the biology theme, I'm thinking like organ harvesting. Uh, that's a little too, that'll squig me out a little bit. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. What if we have to do like these dangerous raids into the biodomes? Sure. We actually have to like raid them and like pilfer stuff. Uh, to survive, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, we could, or we could toss out a few other ideas too and see which ones we like best. Well, I mean, okay. if there was, so there's like, that there's the high tech biodomes, but people have to they have to be service people within there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I love that. All right. Do we go to work? Do some of us go to work in we, the biodomes? Sure Maybe only young people, because the older people are too hostile. <laughs> to <see them laughs> these like very sensitive. It's like, uh, it's like. Yeah, it's like having having New Yorkers like like the stereotypical <laughs> ultimate New Yorker going to like Hawaiian culture or something. Just like the clash of pace and intensity versus. We're just perpetually yeah. walking here. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. I wonder, can we make it more quest because it's a questionable activity? What if? We like start working like really young because because like you said the high strongness yeah. really affects us. So people in our societies, we like kind of have to go to work when we're like seven years old mm -hmm. and work until we're like twenty. And we specifically work in the biodome, so like we're younger. I, I, I'm actually looking at the age transitions, guys, and it looks like the idea of people going into the biodomes is actually a major theme. So maybe we should like stay away from that for now. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Sure. Yeah. But but we at least like interact with the other classes, right? Like maybe when we're younger, we're in positions where we might have to interface a little more. Yeah, that's a good idea. Does what that... if mm -hmm. uh what if I'm I'm looking at these like um the idea of where is it? Uh the the the, the cyborgs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we haven't brought in the cyborgs yet. Right. So what if the questionable thing is because like, you know, we, we, we don't have a lot of food and then disease is rampant. We like apply these weird blood toxins to us and stuff. What if we go, we, we, we have to, each of us scrounges and saves and pilfers and stuff because it's, we, we think that cyborging ourselves, making us like removing some parts of ourselves to, and putting machines is like the way we can survive. Oh my God, my silver nails totally work for this game. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, so you're saying that like a, a genetic modification and cyborging ourselves is like how we're the questionable activity. Yeah, but but uh, because we're so poor, we have to scrounge and find a way to do that, and it's not always the healthiest way of doing it. And like we just you know, I feel like the 
kind of okay so how about this i feel like the spirit of the question here is like where do we get resources when the rich control most of the resources right and what if the answer is like we have to go into these high temperature areas or like high radiation areas that's very dangerous and like you need to be cyborged out in order to be able to remotely survive them sure Instead of going into the super habitable zones, we're actually scrounging in the least habitable zone. Right. How do you, what do you guys think of that one? That sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone, someone made the comment that you don't have to slime yourself if you already have synthetic skin, right? So that's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, right? but of course, then we don't have touch receptors anymore. And, you know, that's the trade-off. Yeah. Yeah. So scrounging improvised cybernetics is kind of like what it sounds like is that using correct? improvised cybernetics to scrounge in dangerous labs. that brings just a thought uh with mind that they might be certain like old masters who are the ones who know how to like use the improv who like who are like our surgeons and can like do the improvisation on you something like that could be interesting yeah that yeah. could be a character yeah that sounds like a great character <laughs> All right, and the last one is our free aspect. So this one, the choice is ours. That's whatever we would like. Um, I we add one thing. I think I think the I think those modifications are for us very very costly. Like to have mm -hmm. synthetic skin. Like of course I would prefer to have synthetic skin than have this neurotoxin. But the cost is like is really high. Oh, so there's even like a bit of stratification within ourselves, is what it sounds yeah. like. I mean, like the the cost, like the financial cost, or like the like personal toll. Uh, I, I mean, like, like I was thinking financial cost. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and it, we because of our society, we might it might be a sort of a currency on favors and things as well. Like it's like financially expensive. I can't afford this because not a thing. But like I owe you, or like okay, I will give you my firstborn, or, you know, like, we, like, will barter, <laughs> like, barter terrible somebody, things. Somebody that actually gets synthetic skin, like, they might be, like, of some new class, but they actually owe all of their scrounging and their entire future wealth. Oh, shit. Yeah. Just... Ooh, I love that. Yes. Like, you yourself, like, yeah, like, you're, like, you're not indentured, but, like, you have so much debt, but, like, you're cool and you're competent, but, like, you have, like, a lifetime of debt. Yeah, you can work out there now, but you owe all of the riches of your work to someone else. So, <laughs> one thing, one thing, I don't want to negate our first aspect with our synthetic skin aspect, you know what I mean? So, we want to balance, because we don't want to be like, oh, we're all going to skin, and then the first aspect of the slime will not come into play as much anymore, mm -hmm. so we'll have to, we'll have to keep that in mind well, everyone needs the slime in order to survive but a few right. people use cybernetics right um, right okay. but like they still have to slime the rest of themselves like you don't get to like not slime your head because you're cybernetic <laughs> right 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 yeah yeah okay cool that's cool exactly cool so we still need the free aspect then unless we want to make this stratification the the aspect but i think I, that's I feel kind like of we're applying like i feel like we're applying like a favor economy like a really cutthroat favor economy or something mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that I feel that's less of an aspect. I feel that's like arises. I think something more specific and unique as an aspect. Like, like I don't know. Like, this first thought. Like, what if we are also all in communicate? We get there these weird radio towers. We get strange communications from them. We don't know who it's from. Or like, what if I don't know. Um, um, there is an underground nuclear bomb that is going to, I don't know, something specific that is an aspect, I think. You know? It's possible. The, the favor economy is still pretty specific, too, I think. Like, that would, that would like, I think there's some weird stuff we can do with that as well. Um, but, yeah, so. What if the those signals that we're receiving uh, are something that are coming through only to the people who have had like a certain level of cybernetics? Like you start to, you know, you start to implant a, a little bit, maybe close to the brainstem and stuff, and then they start hearing things. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So certain number. Oh, that's interesting because then it could be schismatic where some people like don't get the implants. Uh, you're gonna start hearing weird stuff. So I'm like, no, these are like the voices of the angels. We should get implants and hear stuff. And that can be like conflict among different people. Can, That's can we make like severe inequality or like like strong schisms, like the aspect in question? Because like, mm -hmm. there's, like the people who get the messages, right? There's the people who are old and the people who are young. There are the people who are rich and the people who are poor. Like I feel like this is a repeated theme that we want to be able to come back to. Yeah, there are lots of different dimensions in which we're cut. Is yeah. what it sounds like, right? Yeah. Both in terms of 
age and access to cybernetics and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that one I'd like to make a little bit more specific in some way. I really like it, um, but I wonder how we can like make it so that's not overwhelmed by the other two aspects too, because it kind of intersects a lot, right? I, I propose that you sharpen this one because we've got a lot going on. So I propose that you suggest yeah. the thing that will mechanically work the best to support everything else. All game designer of this game. Yeah, yeah we so can cheat here. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think that I think the best thing here is one that's fairly perpendicular to the other two, right? Uh, something that like um, doesn't actually build on them that much that okay. just gives us other points that we can like because we'll build on them individually as we go on in the game we just kind of need some more supporting pillars uh that's why i kind of like the the favorite economy one right because like that's one that's like far away and i think that we're going to be able to like get a lot of weird perpendicular stuff coming out of it we can see how things smash together does that sound like fun to folks yeah, cool all right let's do that okay. Oh, and someone suggested gangs in chat, which I think will uh, will happen pretty naturally as the game goes on. Too. Yeah, it, it's also in the yeah um, rebel uh, uh, solar burn and gangs. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, cool. And so now we have uh, four questions. I'll ask everyone one question, uh, and this will let us put a little like uh, actually build a house out of this foundation with these three pillars that we have. Uh, cool, Jay. Do you mind if I ask you first, since you're sure. uh, first in the in the order for me? Uh, with a monopoly on real foods, the corporations have left us to fend for ourselves. What synthetic food sustains us? Ooh. Can I actually bounce this question to Sharag? Because I feel like this doesn't really matter. You feel like, like Sharag could have strong opinions yeah, I feel like on this? this is a clear techno babble answer. So, for biologists, yeah. <laughs> are, are, you, are you okay with that, Sharag? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Answer? So, okay. What if? <laughs> what if? Um, so, uh, I worked on a. So I worked one. <laughs> Um, mashing up toenails of pregnant women to measure the arsenic content, right? So what if it was great? The key yeah, to your expression. that you don't inhale the powdered toenail. That's the key. Um, so what if um, when we cut, we we save uh, any shed hair and toenail and like skin and things because we can let we put them into fermenters and have a specific symbiotic like fungus bacterium compound, like a SCOBY for a, for the, the, the fermented tea drink, what's it called? Um, kombucha. Uh, kombucha. Kombucha, like a, a yeah. kombucha SCOBY, like a fungus okay. uh, bacterium complex that ferments toenail hair. Yeah, okay, I, I, I'm not gonna get, too, let's not get too specific about what's in it, if that's Great. okay. okay. Great. So it's like residual, like disused, like human tissue. Yes, gets turned like into the stuff the that makes your mattress heavier. Can, can yeah. we like abstract it out a little bit more, even like it, like the, it's it's sludge, and there's something vaguely organic about it. Yeah. And this is probably the actual background, but like, and it, and, it, and it comes out, and you bake it into this like <laughs> cookie like thing, this like wafery cookie like thing that you eat. That's pretty. Flavorless. <laughs> this used bio sludge. Yeah, yeah. this used bio sludge. Yeah, just, okay. does, does that work? Do you, do you need to X that, Hakan? No, you? it's okay. As long as we keep it at a level of abstraction where I'm not actually thinking about okay. like consuming uh, like skin like particles. Did you this, Hakan? Was it? No, no, no. This is, this is good. This is good. Okay. But let's keep it at a level of extraction where it's like generic bio sludge that we don't quite know what the deal is, right? Um, where like this is this can be the backstory, but uh, yeah. great. Uh, cool. So next one, many abandoned skyscrapers, row houses, and alleyways now make up our slum home. How do we fortify it against corporate influence? So Jay, would you like to take this one, or would you? Sure. Uh, let me take one to think about. It. Mm -hmm. So the question is sort of like, how do we keep? Oh, how do we fortify any of our? any of our home at all, like, oh, against corporate influence. How about we do have this, I think this is probably legit at the scope now, like we have this case of uh, people who go and work inside the domes. So they feel like they their interaction with us is sufficient because there's kind of like a an underclass of service people who come from the outside. So any, they feel like they already know enough about us mm -hmm. um, and they feel like, you know, 
they can, if they wanted to like make trouble for us, they just make trouble for those people. So they're sort of almost like our sacrificial, like, you know, like dome workers, but like they also like go and get valuable resources from the inside and bring it out to us, like we were talking about previously. Mm -hmm. So How does that you guys? So it sounds like these people who go into the domes kind of uh, lead them on to feel like they have a level of more influence than they do, or exactly. they provide this. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel that also is the other way that as the corporates see us coming in and serving them, they're like, oh, we see them, we know what they're doing. And so they don't pay attention yeah. as much to the actual yeah, We have them under our control because they're working for us. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they're not like a worthwhile target market. We don't have any currency to actually like be, be wooed by the corporations. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly. Cool. There isn't uh, we have lots as much profit to be had. We have slime and sludge cookies. <laughs> we do. Nothing. Good old sludge cookies. <laughs> All right, uh, next one for you, Amber. Uh, there are three gangs among us, some more friendly than others. Which gang is friendly and what fashion trend sets them apart? How is their okay, activity there we go for, distinguished? Oh, the gang person. Yeah, exactly. How is their activity <laughs> distinguished from the other two? So who's the friendly gang? Um, okay, so fashion trend. I'm gonna put an idea out there and you guys let me know how you feel about it. I think that um, I think that holograms are a thing, mm -hmm. and um, there is a friendly gang that maybe takes on kind of like a a sort of religious aspect that you see in super hard times like they've sort of they're very hopeful but they've actually given up on their current life they're like the f our our future our like you know the the afterlife is like where it's at and this is just like you know we'll just make the most of what we can here so they they have these holograms that project um sort of fanciful just silly very light-hearted like outfits and hats and stuff um, and they're, they're pretty much just in some kind of denial about how dark everything is. And they're like, well, just why, why, ha why have a hard time? Oh, I um, love that. I love you know, that too. You know how like medieval church architecture, one of the ideas was to make the church look like the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So what if it's something like that? Like we have this hologram because there's at some level, there's this belief that this is what we will look like when we transcend and we want to recreate that here. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we'll we'll just be happier, right? We'll have these like novelties and we'll have like cause for recreation and stuff. Um yeah. or yeah. out of this nonsense. And so th uh, that's kind of cool because that means I would I imagine they also slightly glow these holographic holographic parts. Mm -hmm. So you can e immediately tell that from the gang members because they have glowing holographic things. Yeah, they 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 have them like stashed away in different places to give to people and they like exude yeah. this like faint glow. I think, yeah. I think this gang also has like a little bit of a business enterprise where um, when you're eating your like baked cake thing, you could uh, employ their service to visually feel like you're eating some wonderful fanciful thing. Yeah. You can kind of keep yourself a little bit and it's like a little bit of a fun experience, but that's sort of how they gain favors and money and stuff in their little mini economy. That's totally what was that? Oh, I said their name is totally something like full spectrum or some like wordplay on the word light. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't we don't have a lot of flavorings for our um sludge cookies, so we make do with the holograms to make them look cooler at yeah. the very oh, yeah, like fluffy multicolor cake things and like refreshing cold drinks. And... Yeah, that's awesome. Or like, mm -hmm. oh, this is actually an old earth orange and everyone's like oh <laughs> beautiful all right and so the last one for me is what is the most at-risk group amongst the slums uh i think the most at-risk group is going to be uh the 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 kids uh because as we had said before they don't get the same type of reaction from the sludge right so they don't have this like constant level of strungedness uh, and so that just makes them an extra shade of vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, they have to deal with this hostility all the time. Um, they might be constantly getting hit up to actually go to the domes to actually interact with people because they know that they just interact better with children because they kind of have better temperaments. 
Uh, they don't have the adrenaline constant yeah. to be in the yeah, yeah, people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, instead of being like, oh, you're a teenager, you're high strong, it's like, oh, you're a teenager, you're super chill. All right, that sounds great. So those are our... Uh... There's one more question left. Oh, but we only have four, so we just do four oh, of them. Okay. Um, but yeah, that sounds great. Um, now... One thing I was considering is I think we had a number of things that we kind of latched onto while we were doing those answers. I was wondering if we wanted to change the last aspect into one of those, just based on like if we felt like one of them was grabbing us. Because I don't feel, feel like we went back to the favor economy as much. Um, but like we talked a lot about the cookies. We talked a lot about the uh, the this this full spectrum uh, sect, right? Uh, I mean, we could if we want instead of favor economy, but slightly slightly is like gang feudalism or like gang leadership, right? We have mm -hmm. a lead to the gangs uh, and we owe, I mean, it's linked to the favorite comment. It's all about they owe each other and you go scavenge. Our gang has the better graft surgeon, but their gang has, can make the most um, long lasting sludge cookies. It's a gang economy? Yeah, and I like that because that, that really brings back these like full spectrum folks too, right? Like, because they're one yeah. of the gangs yeah. that provide services. Uh, cool. So, uh, who was it? Little individual resources to rely on the collective resources of each other. Yeah, <laughs> because no one can do it alone. Yeah. You know, this is so funny because this is kind of a mirror of the corporate structure where corporations <laughs> specialize in product. It's literally the same thing. Gangs specialize in product in a way, and we don't. We we were just emulating that. So, what does that say about? cycles of like what does that say about capitalism it is inescapable <laughs> gangs are just gonna rack up debt and go bankrupt and yeah. exactly uh, this is gonna bail out by other gangs. all right i'm going to now deal um three of the voice cards to everyone now that we have our uh our wait can you pause one sec my bathroom light is on it's really annoying me yes feel, feel free to can we just take a one minute bio break actually sure thing i'm gonna place that waiting uh, let me just uh, save all the. All right, and we're back. Um, everyone's now gotten three voice cards. Uh, so the next thing that we do in the game of dialect is uh, actually make characters, uh, which is done quickly through uh, archetype cards. So each of us gets uh, 
three archetypes, uh, and as we choose them, we'll show the audience the cards as well. Uh, you folks just put them on the board, and I'll move them to the appropriate space so everyone can see them. Uh, but we'll do it one at a time as we pick the ones that we want. Uh, and let me see. Are we able to see what the aspects are? Like, are they displayed somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you uh, go into Roll20, everything's kind of in the top left corner. Uh, and that's also where I'm going to be putting all the language stuff. Uh, because that's where the um, the stream is zoomed into. Are you able to see it in Roll20 uh, by the H1, H2, H3 text? I do not see it. I see little pieces of paper, but not text on them. Yeah, I think that's the art, right? Oh, does it not give you folks the nameplates? Uh, double click on the piece of paper, and there will be a check that says show nameplates. We'll have to figure out a way to make that default. Wait, maybe that's just the art. I'm sorry. Was it just yeah. the art? No, I but think I feel the like these are like the drawing. I don't see anything else. But they weren't in the drawing before. I don't. Yeah, think. I added them on, and there's supposed to be text on them underneath them uh, that says what the aspect is. But it looks like it's not showing up by default yet. So yeah. if you just double click, there will be a checkbox that says "Show nameplates," uh, and you just click that. They are not clickable by yeah, me. There's, there isn't anything that's clickable. Oh, it's just for the GM view. Someone says, interesting. I wonder if you folks are able to become GMs in that case. Uh, can you go on to the very right? Oh, the GM might have to show a nameplate. All right. Thank you, people who know way more about this than we yes, do. Yes, thank you. Folks. Yeah, I don't use Roll20 that often, so I don't know all these like tools. Let's see. All right, we're going to take just a two-minute break while we figure out how to get this to show for everyone. So uh, just give us one moment. All right. All right, and we're back. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, but thank you, Justin, for uh, also providing the answer, uh, because that's all we had to do. Um, You're so wise, Justin. You get internet points. Yes, you have gotten plus five internet points today. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, so we each have uh, our three archetype cards. Oh, Justin's very happy about the internet points. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, cool, so we'll each pick one. Uh, and then we will go from there. So, um, so how do we pick it? Do we drag it onto the screen? Yes, you'll drag it onto the screen, and then I'll place it on the play space, and then I'll move it somewhere where the uh, where the uh, chat can see it as well. Perfect. 
I am ready if we want to go with me. Sure. Go for it. Okay, so I'm going to pick this one, the magician. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to move it a little bit so where our chat can see it. All right. Um, so I'll read it out. Magician, uh, no one understands how you accomplish what you do. You have your secrets. People talk to you when you've exhausted all rational options. Sorry, sorry, when they've exhausted all rational options. Yeah, What's, what are you thinking with this character? Oh, this is cool because we established already. I feel I am one of the cybernetic surgeons. Nice. Oh, the surgeons. Nice. Okay. And so how does the how do the surgeons work then? Because it's all improvised and like very slap shot, right? Yeah. So um okay, okay. I love this idea that we had before about when you put enough cybernetics, you start hearing voices. Mm -hmm. But something to do with that, like at one point long time ago, and I, I also age differently because I'm so cybered. Uh, <laughs> a lot oh, oh, can it be like Odin? I have one eye, you know? Ooh. Right, like sure, <laughs> yeah. I'm the magician, right? And Odin was the magician and stuff. Oh my God, we're so we elude so much. Anyway, um, so uh, so I was at long ago cybered a lot. I don't really remember how. It probably wasn't one of the corporations. And now because of that, I have this almost instinctual like way of like putting together cyber. And I think it's like voices in my head and weird frequencies and stuff. And I'm like, ha 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 ha. That's perfect. Yeah. And the uh, and on the bottom there, so you identify with only one of the aspects. Yes. Your secret lies within it. So I and think that's kind of exactly the already. cybernetics. Yes, exactly. All right, yeah. perfect. And oh, sorry, uh, moving it when you're supposed to move it. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just moving the cards to where a stream can see it easily. Uh, yeah. See, and yeah, that's what it says on the bottom. Uh, cool. Would you like sample names for your character? Um, should I pick one from the book? Oh, yeah, you have the book in front of you. Yeah, you can pick one. So the book has Sukarnox, uh, Aisyahi, Evan, Jorde, Dwi, Ku, Omar, Novita, Ajat, and Lucy. Um, I am going to modify one of them because that's always fun. Uh, and I'm going to go with... So I actually like Sukarnox a lot. You know what? I'm just gonna go with Sukarnox. I like that a lot. Just, just go straight with that one. Yeah, I'd very, I'd, I'm rarely straight, but this is Sukarnox. Go straight with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Sukarnox. They're like a grizzled older dude with like a missing eye and a <laughs> and an implant other eye and like all kinds of cybernetics all over. Oh, so the missing eye is not replaced with a cybernetic. No, the missing eye is just missing. That's the sacrifice you must make to be on the tree of knowledge, right? Like what Odin did, so. Uh -huh. And then every, all of these kids are like, who the fuck is Odin? <laughs> <laughs> all right, sounds great. Uh, anyone else have their archetype ready? Amber, you want to go? Um, sure. I may be like halfway there, so we'll just make up mm -hmm. the rest on the um, I think I am going to be the scrounger. Ooh, I love that one. Okay, so, oh, oh, thanks. Um, yeah, some things in short supply here. We rely on you to provide whatever scraps of it we can get. People talk to you about getting what they need. So, I mean, I think sort of what we talked about is like cybernetic materials or what's in short supply. And I'm sort of like, um, I'm kind of like maybe dispatch for scroungers, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, anyone can run and go get something, uh, but very few people know what things could be gotten. Mm -hmm. I have like an inventory of things that are just oh, like that. stealing and things like that. So you're like, a, you like, are like, you know, that go here, go there. This is where, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. I sort of deal in, in secrets and mechanics. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I identify with two of the aspects. So I think that would be uh, improvised cybernetics and uh, trying to see the full board. Gang economy, maybe? Yes. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, and then one of the aspects is causing the scarcity. Um, is that is that even necessarily 
do I, do I need to incorporate that? Because I feel like what's causing the scarcity of cybernetic stuff is sort of like our general economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, the gang economy is all like an offshoot of that and a consequence of that, right? So I think, yeah, it's fairly easy to squint and see that aspect answering that question. Yeah. Sound good? Um, and my name is Novita. Novita, like N-O-V-I-T-A? Yes. All right. And uh, what's, uh, if you if you were to, how does the camera see Novita? Uh, Novita is like, I'm going to say pretty similar to, um, it's that really cool old chick in the Star Wars movie that has the eye goggles and is like, oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. made by Lupita Nyong'o, right? What was that character? Oh, yeah, that's right. Chat, come to the aid. Yeah, what's her name? I forget. Moss? Ma Moss? Moss? Mom? Moss. Moss. Yeah, okay. I think that's yeah. right. I remember being like, that's Lupita Nyong'o. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. Jay, are you, do you know the character I'm talking about? Moss, I'm not sure. Moss but, Kanata. Moss if you want to nice. do a search. She's uh, very short and uh, is old but a badass. Millions of wrinkles have like lived a lot of lives and wears these like sandals. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. The tiny one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The cup owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a she's a whiz and a force, and everyone comes to her and a welcome. I love that. Beautiful. Scratcher. Okay. Uh, let's see. Are you ready to go, Jay? Or. Yeah, um, I think that I will be the leader. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of those in this setting. Um, let's see. And let's see, how do I remove this? All right, cool. Um, I'm a paragon of what it means to be in the isolation. We come to you when we need a, a decision or action, though I feel like there's a lot of different, very conflicting leaders, but I'll be one of them. You identify with all the aspects. You draw your power from one. Um, Let's see, I think that I am one of the, I'll also draw my power from um, the gang economy. So I'm the leader of one of the really big gangs. Um, and I am one of the people to whom all, many favors are owed in the end. Uh, possibly because we are a, one of the key like sludge cookie manufacturers. <laughs> Beautiful. And how do you identify with the different aspects then? Why why is the low level fight and fight something that you identify with? So the low level fight, it's actually the the substance, right? What do we call it? Like the protozoa? Yeah. Right. Um, so I think uh, let's see. I mean, just like everybody needs to use that, right? So that's mm -hmm. I feel I was thinking about um, being like the source of the protozoa, but I feel like that's actually too much power because like every it needs to be freely accessible in a lot of places, right? So it's probably like a publicly available recipe. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm Tetzer. Uh, oh, my name is Saxon, like Anglo-Saxon, like probably it's, I thought it was witty or something. Um, and, uh, and I'm androgynous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you know, I have enough power to be kind of cybered. I actually survived to being kind of old and kind of tense. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I like a lot, like, like the recipe to make the protozoan, like, like the protozoan grows under very specific conditions, but it's well known. So yeah. anyone with the right, like, basic resources can make the habitat to grow it. Um, yeah, because otherwise it. somebody would control just like everything, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, that were sounds you great. One of the, were you one of the, like, founding developers of this or has it been around longer than your time? I think it's been around for a while. Like this whole setup has been around for like, I don't know, like more than one generation. Cool. So I'm just like, you know, the gang boss now and I'm like kind of massive with like huge muscles and like you know, lots of metal. Nice. That's awesome. All right. Saxon the leader. What was that? Novita, Novita is she, her. I, I forgot to mention. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. And so Karnox is grizzled like dude. Um, yeah. All right, well, she. Uh, did you say what Saxon's pronouns were? Sorry. Jay. I'll use they. They, great. And uh, Sukarnox is he then? Yeah. 
So much gender diversity in our game. Woo! Yeah, well, I do. I think they're funny. Uh, cool. Well, I want to be one of these, like, hologram peddlers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying. Uh, and thankfully, I have Celebrity as one of my cards. Oh, I love it. So you. let's see. Let's see what we're going to do. Uh, celebrity, we all recognize you. Silence descends on any room you enter. Heads turn. People talk to you about the latest gossip. Okay, let's see. Um, are you so beautiful? I am so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. So, so I'm definitely picturing someone who... Um, Let's see. Is maybe like uh, someone who um, programs a lot of the the holograms, right? But someone who does it like this is all about arts, right? This isn't just about like pushing code around. This is actually knowing like what is going to resonate and give people hope, right? Like the the seeing your sledge cookie as like an eclair or a croissant actually like make you happier, right? Like which one is the <laughs> more like, and like you have to have opinions about these things. Uh, and you're a chef, match. you're the modern definition of a chef. Yeah, uh, like, one of many hats I wear. A good, a good hologram person knows to match the like contours of the new food to the contours of the cookie. And exactly. Stay up on all the trends of like what's delicious inside the dome because it trickles down to us lowly people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. see the new season of the Dragon Prince because there's totally this happening in it. Wait, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's... Ooh. Yeah, it's amazing. Cool. Well, I don't know it, so I might just recreate that whole story right now. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm definitely seeing someone who who ha who creates a lot of these. Like food is just one of them, I think. But. Uh, they, they create all sorts of different contraptions, right? Uh, just to, to give people hope and to give people like some level of like separation and uh, removal from where they actually are. Uh, you identify with only one of the aspects that made you famous. Let's see. Um, would that be the gang economy in that case or the... I think so, because you're about trading. Yeah. Yeah. You're about trading ephemeral yeah, visual experiences, right? Exactly, but I also see this character as being like uh, one who's a little disjoint from the rest of the gangs too, maybe. Um, yeah, so like the gang economy is very important because I think this character like uh, floats between a lot of the different gangs, right? And has the cachet to be able to do that just because how much people like uh, need and respect what they do. Um, and let's see, what kind of, what kind of character? Uh, I'm also seeing like a like a day like an androgynous character in this, uh, and I'm kind of seeing like um, maybe somewhat like very uh, bold like hair and like different piercings, and I think like maybe like a big undercut that's that's blue over to one side, right? Uh, and I think they their clothing is still of you know the slums of what we can get our hands on, but tries to recreate, like, the, the fashion... Well, if you're that was part of the um, hologram gang, do you also supplement your look with holograms? Yeah, exactly. So maybe maybe it's like, uh, even though my look itself is, like, the actual fabric is, is very simple, like, there's all sorts of, like, jewels and stuff that you wouldn't even know are actually hologram that are, like, right. all over. Maybe, you, maybe your piercings all have some cool, like, moving thing on them. Butterflies yeah. and stuff. Yeah, butterflies. Like, one of the coolest things about hologram outfits is that you can change it, like, every second if you want to. Like, mm -hmm. some days you're, like, fully teal with, like, all these animals jumping off of you or whatever. Some but... days, some minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Your outfits can barely keep up with your own creativity, I think. Yeah. And maybe boom, boom, boom. that's one reason you're, you're a trend maker in holograms. Like, what you do as a hologram, people are like, ooh, now I want, like, chameleons crawling up my back. Holograms <laughs> yeah. move so fast. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the solar slums, changes real fast. All right, sounds great. Uh, and let's see. I will pick the name... I'm tempted to go with just like the most boring name in the list, right? Like, uh, I think that would be Evan. So I think it's <laughs> <gonna> be Evan. 
<laughs> no offense to any Evan who may be watching. It's you true. Are Evans are Evan, It's just compared to Sukarnox, <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> earthly name listed on our list here in the book, Evan. Yes, exactly. All right, perfect. Uh, so let me put uh, Evan Celebrity they All right. Let it go through. Yeah, we're going to be fine. Celebrity. All right, and so you folks can see all the character names and stuff too. So I'm creating yes. Them, right? All right, awesome. Yes, thank you. Okie doke. All right, so I will now recall all of the voice cards, get rid of that deck, and hand us out three of the word cards for H1. Three cards to all those wonderful people. Okay, so everyone should have three cards for H1 now. Yeah. Oh, someone said have holograph angel legs. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> nice. Oh my god, I just thought something. You know there's this idea of the cybernetics? I think what if some people have holograms of cybernetics on them? Like they're actually all flesh. Oh. Have, like, That's brilliant, talk. but like it's like a status symbol, right? <laughs> and like you can kind of see through it, but like the better the hol you, the more you pay for the holograms, the more you can maybe actually. I love this. Better. So so intertwining all our cultural things. That's oh. great. <laughs> okay, and, and to give some background, so we're kind of rushing through some of the rules and not explaining a ton to the to the viewers if you don't already know how to play the game. Uh, but how every turn of the game works. Uh, so I'm just going to go through a brief overview of the turn structure. So you folks feel free to look at your cards while I'm, while I'm giving the spiel. Um, but every turn of the game is uh, divided into three phases, and now we're getting into the actual flow of play. Uh, those phases are make a connection, build a word, have a conversation. Uh, so we all have three cards. Um, they're, at the beginning, they're all age one cards, but those will change as we go along the game. And the first thing you do is make a connection. You'll pick one of the cards in your hand, which will usually have a concept on it. Uh, you'll take it and you'll play it on one of the aspects on the table. So currently, our three aspects are the gang economy, the low-level flight flight, and the uh, improvised cybernetics. So you'll take one of the cards and play it on that. And then you'll explain why we have a special word for that concept because of that aspect. Right? So you'll say, I think we have a special word for this concept. Uh, because of the improvised cybernetics, because whenever the improvised cybernetics do this, we call it this, blah, blah, blah. And it'll give a little justification, but you don't build the word yet. You don't say what our new word for this thing is going to be. The second phase of the turn is build a word, where communally we have a discussion about what that word is going to be with the person whose turn it is leading the discussion. Uh, after we decide on a word, we then move into have a conversation. Each of the cards at the very bottom will have a prompt for a conversation, uh, and that'll let us have a really quick uh, conversation where everyone in the conversation has to either use the new word or conspicuously avoid not uh, avoid using it if it's a word that they really, really never use. Um, and so you do those three things. That's your turn. And then you'll discard the card. Uh, you'll discard that card you just played, draw a new card for the upcoming age, uh, and then we'll go around uh, until everyone has done that once, and that'll be the end of age one. Make sense? Cool. Cool. Does anyone have a card that they're uh, that they'd like to play immediately? Uh, I totally do. All right, Ooh. good because you're next in like uh, clockwise order from my face <laughs> in the stream too. So, oh, you have right. time. Yeah. All right. So you, you I have, have the best use of time. I remember one of my favorite games. You define the unit of time. Well, what did I do? Uh, do you remember this one game with the preve and the next? Oh yeah, the time that that's still one of my favorite words that has ever occurred in your style. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about this maybe after the game, so it's not to distract. <laughs> but chat, if you want to remind us to tell you the story behind that word, I really love that word. Sorry, Jay, I I, I diverted you right before you started. All right, all right, all right. So uh, this is an important unit of time in the isolation, tied to our routines, environment, and whatever defines the rhythm of our days. Um, and the aspect I'm tying it to is so like the. Um, the protozoas. 
Yeah. Yeah. Aspect protozoa slash fight flight. Uh huh. Yeah, protozoa slash fight flight. Yeah. Because like um, it's it's the unit of time in which you need to refresh your protozoas. Yeah. Right. Oh. Um, and yeah. which is gonna be about like two to three days, um, about two and a half to three days, which is I think also re- fits really well because like because everything is so high adrenaline in our world, like the like the landscape of situations typically totally change on that time scale <laughs> anyway. So it kind of fits both the fight flight theme and the protozoa theme. Um, so they kind of, it, it kind of mirrors just how much shit just completely upends itself on a two to three day basis. Yeah, it's, it's like the time scale that you actually make meaningful plans on. Uh-huh, that's perfect. Uh, I want something, help me come up with a term for this. So I want something that evokes like the physical process of like applying the protozoas, maybe even like historically. Um, do you, when you put it on, do you put it on yourself or do you, do you pretty much always have a buddy helping you getting the heart to reach areas? It's like suntan lotion. Yeah. I feel like you've got to be able to put it on yourself though, because otherwise you can't be a loner. Yeah. So I can imagine you put it on mainly and then you have to wait a bit for it to like grow into the hard to reach places maybe. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like it spreads, it spreads the toxin. Like uh, what if it's something to do with the life cycle, the word, I mean, like, because maybe you have to put on it in two to three days because it dies, right? Um, you have to refresh, you have to like scrape the, oh, what if you have to scrape the residue off and put the new layer and some people don't bother with scraping it off so they look very different and kind of weird. Sorry, how kind of that too much? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> like, 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 a, you know, like a Roman strigil, like some people like use that to like scrape it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After your face. <laughs> All right, let's see. But but I think Jay had a suggestion as to like where you thought this word could be going. Uh, could, could, could you say it again, Jay? Just so we can read oh, Something about like, I, I like the Im- the idea of having this image of the beaker that it comes in. Oh, right? yeah. Or maybe even now it's not even in beakers, but like historically, like, you know, it came in this like dirty little tube. Yeah. Um, that was like caked and had been like used like six or seven times. And like, it's something about like the process of like throwing away the tube. So like, like a scratch or like a beaker or like a, like a toss. Mm, yeah. Or, a break, like, a shatter, like break. any of those things, right? breaks like a strange ism of a beaker and and tossing it except we totally don't toss anything now we completely what about a clink yeah clink? Oh, like, clink. Clink. like the sound it makes when you toss it yeah maybe it came with these metal ampules oh, I like and that. when we tossed them they clinked yeah and now we don't toss yeah, them like amber. now we hoard them yeah. but you know yeah. all right so a unit of time is a clink all right, and that's like a two and a half to three day period, but yeah. more more importantly, it's how long the protozoa yeah. stays alive for. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, and a plan yeah. is made. Yeah. How, how long are our sunlight hours? I can imagine we have a lot of sunlight hours and very few nighttime hours, right? So it's like radiation sun. It's, is then we get to admit to where on the globe we are. I don't think we really. Yeah. I think. Yeah, the, I don't think we know. Yeah. I think if the clinks are important, there's like a lot of sunlight because we need to keep this protozoan on us for most of the time. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Cool. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense because if we're somewhere where, but like you're still going to have like it's still a globe. Like you're still going to have day night. Right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So maybe we're in like northern Sweden kind of area <laughs> where it's really bright for a lot of time. All right, Swedish people, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so the conversation is a plan is made. Uh, so let's see. Let's see, Saxon, who would Saxon be making a plan with? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like Navita's a great answer mm-hmm. to this. Oh. All right, yeah. um, and we just do like a really short dialogue, right? Yeah, the only restriction is that you have to, you have to use the word, but yeah. Or if you really hate using it, then don't use it. But. Navita, I need more weapons. What kind? Rifles. The kind that shoots very far. I know that we can get them from the assault flats. 
Who uses rifles? Are you trying to make a statement? I'm trying to hold a perimeter. All right. I know where rifles are. What have you got? Well, what do you need? Butter, the real stuff. Ooh. Actual yeah. butter from inside. That will take four clinks. Let me know when you want those rifles. Sooner than that. Next clink. But you will get your butter. You know these things take time. How many rifles? How many rifles can you get me? For how much butter? Forty rifles. Forty pound, rifles. Two pounds of butter. I remember no video you have to use the word. You need a live cow to get real butter. You know that. I'm busy. Three pounds of butter. <laughs> Three pounds owns and you give me five clinks to get them. Five clinks. Done. All right. Five five five. Real cows. I, know. <laughs> so, I, I, I just realized yeah. that my reaction throughout the whole thing was like, I, I'm like listening, I'm listening and it's like butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Stuff got I real. I the about butter. the real cows because that gives a whole new word, like meaning to organic. Like organic means from an animal. You know, <laughs> means genetically synthesized from bacteria yeah. or something. If yeah. You say like liquid sun butter oil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like temperature sensitive, unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> Liquid sun butter oil, yes. As someone in chat was like, and it better not be margarine. <laughs> Accurate, it better not be margarine. All right, so I'll deal one card back to Jay uh, from age two. So you get an age two card now, Jay. Uh, all right, uh, Sharong, are you ready to go? Yeah, so what if um, I'm tempted by the builder word, but I actually want to do this one instead, and I can't seem to draw ah. Uh, drag it here. So death. All right, that, that escalated yeah. quickly. Um, our language for ultimate loss. But I was I was actually thinking of a, a specific death. Uh, maybe it comes from that, and it 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 formally refers to the specific death, but people use it. And I was thinking um, the specific death when people die on the scavenging trips. Hmm. Ooh. Right, because. I am sort of involved in that. Like, I, I don't go on the scavenging trip, but I'm involved in, like, using the scavenge things. And this bringing the cybernetics back is, like, a sacred right sort of thing. Like, it's important. And there are many ways to die in these, like, ruined areas. And, like, you know, it's, it's like, it, only, like, young and healthy people, uh, you know. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of importance to this specific way of dying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I need help in what is this like verb maybe like he verbed. Yeah, let's see. So it's it's something that should give this particular task the amount of like gravitas or like respect that it that it deserves. Or is it is it respect that we feel towards people who die scavenging? I, uh, for I, think, or? I think the surgeons like propagate promulgate propagate this idea of like yes be respectful for these people because that increases their own status right oh sure and increases the likelihood that other people will feel better about going on potentially deadly missions exactly and bring back the stuff that we need to do our trade right i mean i love these cybernetic fingernail things i'm doing right now mm -hmm. uh, so to clarify are we picturing at this point that we are still using this word only for this type of death or like, uh, is it the scope of the card that we have to apply it to death in general? Hakan, what do you think? I think we could we can define it either way. I think Sharon, you'll make a call as to which one it should be. Yeah, I, I like it to be the specific death that maybe <laughs> later on it might become more common or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's because okay. it, at the moment it has gravitas, like you said. Yeah, what um, about it like frozen like so like imagine if like we think of dying normally because of stuff as like burned right yeah. so it's mm -hmm. like something that's like the opposite that evokes this kind of sense of like specialness or uniqueness right because normally the sunburn or whatever kills you right um but here even if it is a sunburn you want to 
make it have gravity. So like iced or like ice. What was that? Well, well, uh, yeah, iced or frozen or. I yeah. think ice is used in, in, in human slang to be yeah. killed or something as well. So I don't want to use that. Or yeah, in the shade. Made. You're made in the shade. Oh. Ooh, interesting. Um, uh, we can go super fantasy and go like Umbra, but that sounds stupid. <laughs> uh, that sounds stupid. It also gives the connotation that they have they have been protected. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a yeah. Person. It gives like a, and that that's cool because that brings to mind the thing you brought up about the religious religiosity of the of the gang, right? Um, so uh, okay, so shade, um, dark, oh, drowned because there's that? no water, drowned because there's no water, like an association with martyrdom. Hmm. I like the like. Let's I, I, let's try and do the shade darkness okay. thing more than the drowned or the ice. That one of those um cave uh, uh spelunking no um going dark Getting... yeah blind mm -hmm. Ooh, blind is i think i think going blind is actually a legitimate thing that can happen in like an intense sun stream oh right world. true so that's something else like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can go sun blind yeah what about what is something simple like darken to go dark to, to like, just... like he darkened mm -hmm. which meant he died out in the in in the solemn way in the in the in the salt yeah. marsh lands and stuff but it evokes almost this like calming feeling in us because like yeah so few things are actually dark there i don't know yeah like, yeah yeah because we're the sun is such a bad thing yeah dust yeah. darkened yeah Ooh, dusk. Dusk. dusk is pretty cool yeah Let's do dusked. Let's do that. All right. All right. You got it. Because that sounds a little weird. A thing well. that has not previously been a verb. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a, that's a good one. Okay. Okay. Um, where are we putting the words on the map, Hakan? I can't see. Oh, I'm putting them. I'm putting them on the aspects. You, uh, let's see. Oh, oh so perfect. Dusk okay. Is... I see. So which one is that built off of? That's off of the cybernetics. Oh, so cybernetics. cybernetics. Mm -hmm. It's a cyber because people have to go and fetch them and then they die doing that. Yeah, yeah. totally. Okay, so conversation, um, it would be with uh, probably with the scrounger, with Novita, right? Because I feel like Novita's going to be in a lot of conversations. <laughs> Maybe, because she controls the people who go scrounging, right? Yeah, yeah I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so um, okay, um, so the scene. Uh, let's say we're in my um, surgery, right? In my my house is also my surgery, not very hygienic. Um, um, uh, so I'm like, no, Vita. I am sorry for your loss. Real sorry, huh? It is an honorable passing to be dusked, of course, but I am sorry that you lost a valuable member of your team. I don't know where you got off even trying to use the honor of the word dusked. Every time my crew gets dusked out there, it's a huge profit to your economy. What is the lineage of all of these parts you're using? You're an empire built on death, and I resent that we need you. Novita, we all need each other in these troubled times of sunlight. That is how it has know always been. Know what you came for, and the price is double. You want to call me tomorrow? I find value in your services, Novita. And yeah. I value you as an ally and as a, uh, as an, as someone who sees value in my work. I've got and some jobs. Did you have a quote you needed? And for <laughs> that reason, I will accept your price. As long as you remember that the ones who haven't dusked have done so because of my ministrations to their flesh. It would be good to remember that, Novita. Threaten me again and I'll be your last source. Bye. 
Alright. <laughs> that was delightful. <laughs> I, I thought that when you were when you said that to double it, I don't know, the first thing that crossed my mind was like, whatever your price was now slathered in butter, and that's the new price. <laughs> <laughs> butter economy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, delightful. Uh, okay, so um, Amber, it's your your yep. your go. Right. Um oh, I'll deal with an H two card. Oh, do I get a card? Oh, I do. So many colors. Clink and dusk. Oh, right. something good. How about, how about a word for wonderful? Oh! <laughs> we have hope, milk and honey, all that is good. May we fill our days with it. What are you good? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Milk and honey and butter. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. oh, what would you like to tie that to? Yeah, I think I... I think I would like to tie it to the... Um, Let's see, you've got the gang economy, the protozoa, fight or flight, and where's the third one? Uh, Improve cybernetics. The, yeah, the improvised cybernetics. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Um, Which of these bleak things would you like to, <laughs> to attach wonderfulness to? Yeah, I think it's the... I think it's the fight or flight kind of aspect. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, we're in this really harsh sun climate and we're just getting like ratcheted up intensity. And I think we sort of have a concept that like shade and rest and peace are kind of like all one and darkness. It's like mm -hmm. uh, a yeah. nonsensical loose idea from a long time ago about Zen. Um, I love it. And it, sounds, very out of touch with it. and it sounds like it's tying to that dusk like uh idea a little bit right and that reverence and like uh just joy we feel and it could about. also be something about the brief moment in between adding your new layer protozoa and removing the old one where you don't have the toxin like pounding through your veins yeah i wonder if that moment is a little bit like you know when you when you're a kid and you play and play and play and then you're like worn out from it. Mm -hmm. Since applying the protozoa has these like emotional kind of like spikes. rolls with it, spikes. Maybe it's like the there's like a just a hint of peace at the very end before you get like hyped up again. Yeah. Down like associated with like coming down and also right like right down. like trough like a sinusoidal trough. Yeah yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't oh, know what that is. Yeah, all right. It's a, a, yeah. a trough. Like oh, a trough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it. Sorry, I'm foreign. I'm foreign. Um, <laughs> what, what if it has something to do with the, the the word? Something to do with this idea of cleanliness, right? Because you're not covered in the protozoa. Yeah, and if we can get the shade stuff in there too, I think that would be really cool. Um, do you want suggestions, Amber? I do. Thank you. Let's see, are there any cool words for particular times? What about REM? Like the idea that like you can't get a lot of sleep. Oh, like, like rapid eye movement? Like Yeah. Yeah. REM is such an old concept. Like we we no longer experience REM, I think. Oh, well, I like think, sleep I think is so messed up. Yeah, yeah, I think uh yeah, I think that's that's, 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 that's really true. cool. Yeah, someone's suggesting biocleave in the chat. Which is cool too. Uh, but yeah, I like REM, just like incorporating that sleep thing. It sounds like sleep and evening and stuff like that have almost like a mythical quality yeah. to like how we yeah, do that. Yeah, remember back when people just like slept for eight hours a night and there was like, yeah. Okay, okay, I have an idea, I have an idea. Yeah. What if 
You know the gang which talks about the promised um the promised afterlife, right? Yeah. You know how right now, like a lot of afterlife, sorry, we're gonna be active and having a fulfilling life. What if the promised afterlife is actually sleep? Just sleeping forever. <laughs> Like you will have rest and sleep when you die, oh. and that's what these the the hologram gang people talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What could be better than all sleep? In the darkness, sleep in the darkness Just is what forever darkness, and that's why you need holograms because like because they light up, right? So in the darkness, this is how you can actually see them. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, yes, yes, so fun. We're so fun, guys. Okay, cool. <laughs> we are so fun. All I right. do like the sound of the word REM. Like, mm -hmm. like you say something and I'm like, oh. Feeling the REM in that. Like, oh, Laura, 474747, 47, 47, I think I know who that is says, this is interesting to come in late on and try and make sense of. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm cool with just REM unless you guys have any other iterations. No, REM sounds so fun. Sounds great. Uh, all right, I will put that on the board and the prompt is a shared moment of wonder. Well, I think, um, yeah, I think this scene would be with Evan. Yeah. Here, let me just... Oh, wait, who's all about wonder? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it actually, um, uh, a small rule for everybody. Is it between, does it have to be between my character and Evan, or can I suggest a different? Because mm -hmm. it, it can be someone else and, as well. Cool. I think maybe Sukamox and Evan? Sure. What, what kind of thing would uh, give us a shared moment of wonder, do you think, uh, Sukarnax? Um, okay, so Evan, oh, what if, okay, it could be about a new implant. Uh, it could be, uh, or it could be at an, at a, like an art, kind of artistic show that you did, or it could be where what, like some people just came back from the, um, from the salt plains. Mm -hmm. uh, I love how we just call them the salt planes. <laughs> There's just the thing. Whoever brought that up, uh, I think is Jay, Jay, the salt planes. Do you ever collaborate? I think well, we do. Like, that's what I'd like to explore a little bit too, is like, uh, especially if the cybernetics and the holograms like interact in certain ways, right? Like we might be friends. We might like have a professional relationship from that too. That's not like constantly antagonistic well, okay. and like, yeah, what if I am showing you some of the new stuff I ha I just brought, right? Yeah. Oh, and some of them's going to be potentially a real run. Some fresh material. Yeah, okay, let's start. Let's start. Yeah, do you, yeah, let's start. you want right. me to start the scene or do you want to start this? No, I can start. Ren, you called me in. It's wonderful to see you. It is wonderful to see you, Evan. And I have something to show you that I think you will find most intriguing for your next performance. Ah, oh, what what would that be? Um, you, you know, you know how Novita's last agent tragically dusked uh, last clink. Oh, the the hardest clink <laughs> I've ever heard. Yes, but it was, as I like to say, though not to Novita, a honorable, honorable uh, dusk. Uh, and their team managed to bring back some objects from the old earth that I think you will find are REM almost. REM? I, I do not use the word lightly, Evan. You know that. I do not give in to uh, emotions so lightly. So when I say you will find these to be REM, I do mean it. The word is grave coming from you, Sukarnox. I'm very curious as to what you might be seeing REM in right now. And I, I, I open this, like, um, I open a fridge. Uh-huh. Okay? fridge that I've kind of built. It's like this janky fridge. And I take out four bottles of perfume. Um, and I'm like, do you know what these are, Evan? 
Sukarnax. Of course I know what these are. <laughs> and to enhance your holograms with the olfactory stimulants, think, think the kind of artistry you can achieve. Mm, so you're saying the roses can actually smell like roses? The... That is exactly what I am saying, Evan. Hmm, so what do these four smell like? You have four of them. I have not wanted to waste their potency without you, Evan. Well, let's partake in this remful experience together, shall we, Sukarnox? Evan, this is, of course, precisely and only for research purposes, not for recreation, as long as you remember that. Mm-hmm. Before that, we must remember the dusk was noble and brought us this REM experience. Okay, come on, it's Sukarnax, come on, let's just get to it. Come on, I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> End scene. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so wild. <laughs> Delightful. We are going to have a very rempel experience. And, <laughs> and, 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 our personalities <laughs> are. What was that, ever? I love Sukarnak's like painful meter. Yeah. <laughs> that is a wonderful way to describe it. I can't believe the yeah, first thing with magician. Like the third word I say in the scene is the word that we're replacing too. That was a big old face palm for me. But, <laughs> but I think we kind of established as it went on that like Ren is a more like it's like more than wonderful, right? Like it's, yes. it has uh, more of that. I, I think there was this fascinating juxtaposition though, when you're like, Rem, it's nice to see you. And then he, it was like, I don't use this word lightly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. All right, cool. Let's see the next one. All right, my turn. Um, and... I think we need. I think we need some friends. All right. Oh, and uh, let me deal. Amber, you're owed an H two card, right? Yes. yes. There you go. Well, you think I'm gonna? Mm -hmm. All right. So this type of friendship is unique to the isolation, a bond that comes from a shared activity or a particular way we regard one another. Uh, so I was thinking about the gang economy, but I don't want it just to be like we're in the same gang. I want it to be a little bit more, I want there to be something a little bit more special about it. Um, I mean, if we really wanted to lean in, it could be the people who go together on uh, on, uh, on the cybernetics. Yeah, or, or it's people who share, what if it's two people who share the same lineage of cybernetics? I, I I think that we've been like I'd like to go a little bit more towards the economy and less towards right. the cybernetics, just to like distribute things out a little bit more. Um, what if it's like you're in debt, like you're the person that you're in debt to, or in debt to, or in debt with, right? Like, uh, like when you you're out, your friends oh. got you, and your, your friends out, you've got them. Yeah, it's I, kind I, of I, like your, your smallest level of shared wallet. <laughs> Not yeah. gang level, but like right. So that's my dad is your dad. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I think that's, that's a great so way to about the uh, about the uh, shared experience there. Okay, so let's see. Like, what can that word be? Um, certainly, like something like you know, debtors or debt buddies or something. Uh, would work. Debbie. Your Debbie is that what you said? Your Debbie, your Debbie. Your Debbie or your Debbie. Well, could uh, could Detty or could Det have slightly changed over the years and become like Deet or something? I don't know. Diddy? Yeah, yeah. It was something totally different, like your thumb. Like you, like you sign your debt with your thumb, and you put like thumbprints next to each other or something. Yeah, yeah. And that would be like if this is you, this is your like small economy. Maybe they're like your, the hand or something. Oh, like. Um, Oh, so we're all digits. We're all like in the same <laughs> together. What about okay? What about like palm? But like you know, there's this like religious sort of like. What if it's like psalm or something? You know, 
so we took we took palm because of like that concept of being like together as digits in the hand and change that to like psalm or palm to palm. Palm also has pal right in it. So uh let's see. Interesting. I kinda like the I kinda like the E sound at the end because it's like the it's like a buddy tone. It like takes yeah. the word yeah. it's like a friend, right? So it's like your saw me, your palmy, your what you know. Saw me. I like yeah, saw me. I think that's that's cool. Cool. That makes it more like like oh we're, yeah and not like solemn like uh like dusk or whatever yeah yeah like your money is my money you're my sami like you, you yeah i love that word that's can't say Sami's well. really good all right let's do sami <laughs> this is so fun guys okay cool <laughs> all right let's put that sami up here Um, Ryan Sammy says Detaton. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, a revelation of my friends. Uh, let's see. So we already explored the friendship between. Probably with a P, right? And Evan. Oh yeah, I mean it could be. Do you do you want to have a P? It's your word. I kind of like it. Just. Like, I mean, if it's such an informal word, we'll probably drop, like... Right, we'll drop the silence on right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, so, Saxon, who would you be Sami's with? Sami's mm. with, like... Uh, Sukarnox comes to mind? I, I don't see myself sharing debt with people. I, unless yeah. I mean, I don't really actually share debt yeah, either. Yeah, you probably don't share sure debt. Is isn't debt with to me. But like, I mean, I guess I came up somehow, right? Okay, so it'd be whoever I came up to power with. Well, maybe um, both of us came up to power. That makes sense. We could have both come to, to power together. I and mean, so in the yeah. past we were Samis. Yeah, in the past we were Samis and like now we're like independent warlords. Yeah. <laughs> That's delightful. And the prompt is a revelation of my friends. Uh, so I would like to hear among friends. What was it? A revelation. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I would I would love to hear that between uh, Saxon and Sukarnax. All, right. All right. Should we plan what our revelation is? Um, so I would say even we're like separate warlords, and we're like, but I don't think we're like rivals because we have this deep bond. No, we're, we're like deeply politically tied, right? Like yeah. I've got a lot of power, and like so. Like all of my people are cybered, right? So like all, and, all of my toughest guys to you. Yeah, and and I'm less of a warlord, more of a cult leader. Yeah, yeah. No, you're actually not a warlord. I just think of you as a warlord because I'm a warlord and I project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like a cult. I have power, but not in the same way as you. No, it's actually really different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so a revelation. Like what if? Uh, because I don't remember a lot of my early life because of all the weird cybernetics on me. That could be a oh, you know what? We should bring in the voices. We haven't talked or the about the biscuits. Them. We haven't talked about the biscuits either. Yeah, maybe. Well, don't you make the biscuits? Does didn't we say that? Or do you make the... We make some of the biscuits. Like, everybody <laughs> probably makes some biscuits. We make some biscuits. We have some weapons. Okay. So yeah, I like the good. voices. Uh, and I like the biscuits. The, the what? Guck biscuits? What do we call it? The goop biscuits? Bio Guck? sludge. Bloods biscuits, yeah. We probably call them something more pleasant, but we have we developed a concept. We'll come up with that word later, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, yeah. Do we want to just improv this and see where it no, goes? No, let's just improv it, all right. <laughs> so, um, so um, oh, when oh, is I know. this? I know. Uh, now or is this in the past? Let's let's do it now. Okay. And wh what was the name of the other gang again? The, the, the hologram gang? The hologram gang, yeah. What, what were they called? Over, did you did you suggest full spectrum? Full spectrum, right? Full right. spectrum, yeah. And that's the gang that that Hakan's character Evan is in, right? Yeah. yeah. Call themselves as FS for short. Yeah, FS. totally. FS. Yeah, like, like FS, but. <laughs> FS, yeah. There you go. Saxon, thank you for this invitation into your palace. <laughs> You know you can come anytime you want. But Much is, nicer here. I don't know why you insist on staying in your shop. You could just join us. We could. You could live in the palace all the time. The palace is beautiful, but 
my equipment would be dangerous around so many people. You know that, Saxon. After all, you acquired it for me. Well, uh, we could move it all here in a clink, but I suppose you like doing it your way. I feel isolation brings us closer to the final sleep. I don't know about the final sleep, but I've got some more immediate uh, things to talk to you about. So look, uh, Sami, we've been at this for a long time. I've told you that in a long time, Saxon. Well, once Sami's, always Sami's, right? <laughs> but it is not wise for others to know about our Sami pass. That could be used against us. So I'm in trouble. Just a spot of trouble, but I could use your help. Of course, Sami. I'm glad you see it that way because, um, see these FX people, they're really starting to get out of hand. You know, when a person is hungry, he buys food. When a person is very hungry, she buys a lot of food. And when a person is starving, they buy hope. And that is the problem. Hmm. You say that the FX sell hope to those who starve and need food the most. That is exactly what I'm saying. Clink by clink, the, we're losing ground oh, to the biospheres. The less we have, the more ground FX gains. Hmm. I need you to help me take charge again by, I stop, by not selling to them anymore. Perhaps we can target a high level, high profile member of FX, perhaps they can, I mean, we do not know the will of the eternal sleep. What if a high level member of FX dusks that could happen? Then they would just be a martyr. Hmm. That I is... don't want anyone to dusk. I want them to get fucked in a very, very undignified way, if you know what I'm saying. I see your point. The problem is that FX is the source of REM around here. And I want the opposite to happen. You know what I'm saying? Can you help me out here? I think we can come to an arrangement, Sami. That's we what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That sounds like that serious. was so cool and like devious. And now I have divided loyalties with my one friend and the other friend. Ah! <laughs> we were we were smelling perfume together. <laughs> if that's not sacred, I don't know what is anymore. That dead is more sacred than perfume. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> A mechanism that uh you know like ejects or infuses the air with like a perfume smell i'm sure it wasn't repurposed from like a biomechanical weapon that is great toxins <laughs> exactly with like trace elements of it still right, lingering right. Doesn't, because like doesn't antifreeze taste super sweet so maybe it's the same thing it's something that's just really fragrant but it's also like not really good to smell and when i say perfume i don't know perfume it's like <laughs> These like cylinders of scented things. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like insect repellent or something. <laughs> that you're spraying on the food while hologramming to give people. <laughs> hey, insect repellent actually smells kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, right? <laughs> also, uh, the food is so flavorless, any scent is, is you know, like, whoa. In chat, Sharang has a lot of fans, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, welcome, welcome, people who just joined. Yo, yeah. I know Kika. I'm on a podcast with her. Hey, Kika. <laughs> All right, that sounds great. Uh, so we just finished age one, and uh, I think this is kind of the after doing world setup in age one. This is kind of like a logical like halfway point for us. Uh, so I would suggest we take like a ten minute break, 
Uh, does that sound okay with folks? And uh, just so everyone's aware, we have a, a hard stop at uh, midnight East Coast time, right? Uh, so if we have to like skip a turn in like H2 or H3, just to make sure we, we end by then, that'll be why we do it. Um, but just to give everyone uh, uh, cool. around that. Okay, cool. Uh, so awesome. so what is the time that we are picking up at? Uh, it is now 7.43 uh, in my time zone. Uh, and we'll meet in 10 minutes, so that'll be 50. Okay, great. Woo! All right.
And we're back, folks. Uh, so we got a few requests in chat to give a little rundown for some of the folks who came late. Uh, so we're happy to do that. We'll do a quick uh, rundown about what's happening real quick. And so we're playing in Kira McGrath's setting, uh, the Solar Slums. Uh, so it's kind of a neon, slaver, punky setting. Uh, and uh, the three aspects that we chose uh, was that uh, because the, there's a lot of harmful UV radiation coming from the sun, due to um, the, the depleted ozone layer, uh, we have uh, we have to apply this like protozoa sludge on uh, on a semi regular basis, on a two to three day basis, uh, in order to keep some of the harmful rays away. Uh, this sludge also like makes us super tense uh, when we do it because of how it interacts with different glands, um, and this gave rise to the word clink. Uh, which is the unit of time of how much this protozoa lasts because it used to come in these small little metal containers and whenever you finished applying it, you would kind of throw it away and would make this clinky sound. Um, then we have the improvised cybernetics. Uh, one of the important things that we need uh, also in order to just survive in general is to cybernetically augment ourselves uh, at any chance we get. Uh, because certainly, you know, parts of, of yourself that you're able to augment, you don't have to rely as much on the protozoa, uh, but also it's just really necessary for a number of functions. Um, from this, we got two different uh, words. Uh, dusked, which is the word for death, uh, but specifically death that happens uh, while on a mission to try to acquire more parts for cybernetics. It was something that a lot of the doctors kind of like... Uh, made mainstream because they're trying to glorify this uh, this uh, kind of martyrdom in search of cybernetics uh, so that they continue to have jobs, right? Um, so they're trying to doctors. I know, exactly. Surgeon priests. Surgeon priests. And then um, REM, uh, which is the word for wonderful, which was, uh, did that come from cybernetics or from the protozoa at the end? Because that was kind of like a, a mixture between like when we're between applications as well, was that Amber? It was from Protozoa. It was from Protozoa. It was, it was that fair? Light kind of intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that was our word for wonderful. It's this like kind of basking moment of wonder that you you would have in between applications of this Protozoa, right? Because it's kind of like the only time your it's skin could actually touch breathe. Of peace in between the sanity. Yeah, exactly. And then we also have this like. Uh, what was that? What a terrible world we've invented, guys. Well, I blame Kira. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Kira. Yep. Yes, thank you, Kira. We're just kidding, of course. Um, and then we have Sami, uh, which came from the gang economy. There are all sorts of different gangs. There's one gang that makes this, like, uh, reuse bio sludge biscuits uh, that, you know, Jay makes some biscuits. Uh, but a lot of gangs have different figures in the biscuit pie. Um, and there's another gang, which Evan, my character, is a part of, which does uh, the uh, different holograms to try to give people a moment's relief um, from, from their usual surroundings. And from this uh, gang economy, we got the word Sami, uh, and that was uh, a person that you had uh, gone into debt with together uh, at some point. That was a very close bond. And it was Sami because it started as like, uh, you are kind of like fingers on a hand, which went to palm, which kind of got morphed into psalm and psalmy. Uh, so those are all our words so far. So hopefully that's an easy uh, rejoinder for everyone who's, who joined us a little late. Uh, cool, so let's go into the next, uh, the next age. Uh, so the first thing we can all do is discard one card. Uh, if you'd like to discard a card, feel free to do so, and we'll draw a card for the upcoming age. Um, uh, where do we discard it? Oh, I think if you, let's see, I guess you have to move it into the play space and then right click and just say delete. I think that, that works. Cannot delete. I flipped mine. Yeah, we can <laughs> that's all we can do. All right, I'll, you just flip them and I'll delete them. I'm learning about all these things that only GMs can do. Excellent testing of roll 20 then. Exactly. Uh, everything's working very nice. Uh, okay, so everyone uh, discard a card, I believe. All right, very good. Ooh, mm, uh, I have two of the same now. Hmm. Oh, yeah, two of the same ones? Yeah. Uh, you can discard one of them if you want. 
Yeah, just just for variety, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Did you discard the left one or the right one? Yeah, which one did you discard? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know, Sharon. Oh, the the newest one. The old one is the is the cool one. <laughs> it's like what my priest would say: tradition, tradition. Tradition. Uh, actually, this is kind of funny. Speaking of that, that's Fiddler, right? Um, oh, I guess we're not talking about Fiddler on the Roof. All right, I won't tell my Fiddler on the Roof story. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the next thing we do is we read the next uh, H transition, right? And we decide which way we're going to go down. Uh, so to remind everyone for entering H2, this is going to be an event to foreshadow the end of the isolation. It finds its way into all conversation and is impossible to ignore. Uh, and so at this point, we're going to choose which pathway we want to follow. Uh, one of the pathways is basically that uh, we end up working more and more for the corporate biospheres, right? And that kind of absorbs us one by one. And the other one would be uh, that we're actually stricken with uh, a food. Yeah, that uh, there's a food poisoning attack. On us, right? And people start dying out because of that. And that's how the isolation ends. So, what do folks feel? Do you want to do the food poisoning? I mean, I know that um, Jay has kind of hinted at like food issues. Mm -hmm. I actually feel strongly that we should try assimilation because I feel like we've actually already built an architecture of how food affects our neurology, which this <laughs> then follows up and continues to do. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like I, I think that plays into the tension with that. Sure, I think that sounds great. Um, everyone okay with that? Wait, so 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 Jay, you're you're uh, you're saying we should use the black path because we already yeah, have I was suggesting it. black path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I the other one might be a, another orthogonal angle on the food, I guess, which might be just a lot of too many different yeah. ways in which it's going. Amber, what do you think? Yeah, I'm into it. I can see. A a lot of ways uh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll read the passageway. Um, digital advertisements start hacking their way into people's neuro interfaces, telling of the beautiful life lived in the lush corporate biospheres, with entry level packages being offered for simple labor. Who amongst us is drawn to this and who resists? Ooh. That's a good question. We'll see. Let's find out during play. Um, what was that? I, I uh, um, an early entry point is maybe the holographic fashion is sort of started from from us, mm -hmm. you know, in the way that like lobster became a fancy food, but it actually like, it, it was like the poor people that ate it. So maybe right. like holographic Which outfits in holographic fashion. They're like stealing our our different like our holographic yeah, fashion and, and stuff. Yeah, and then corporations are like, yeah, we're going to start advertising on that. And maybe it's like advertising internally, so you see it as a price of wearing it, but it's probably also a little bit just like advertising so other people can see it. Uh, so they like hack into your holograms every so often and like display something that like... Or it's like a price of the purchase, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh, their brand is a part of the holographic visual experience yeah so yeah yeah it's gonna have butterflies but it's gonna say like clorox or we know whatever <laughs> the wings of the butterfly are come to say clorox you know yeah no that, that sounds exactly how modern advertising is going so that sounds perfect <laughs> there can be purists for clorox to do exactly the sort of thing yeah. <laughs> there can be purists who painstakingly build their own holograms without advertising but that's super slow and who really has time for that maybe evan has time for that yeah exactly right? maybe that's the, the the problem now like for evan if there's more of these holograms that are out there who uh, could afford an unbranded hologram outfit like almost no one yeah so are we supposed to answer the question who is drawn to this and who resists or does that get revealed over play uh, i thought that was a play. suggestion okay. yeah that's like a mm -hmm. Yeah, just like an open question for us to, to, to explore a little bit. Cool. Uh, so by turn order, Jay, you would go first. Um, right. So if you have something in mind already, but uh, we can shuffle that around if you'd like another moment. All right. Well, this is, I'm going to play the incredibly obvious card. Uh, so we can do it. 
because I feel like we really need this. Oh, uh, sorry. One one thing I forgot to do. Uh, we need to move. Uh, decide which aspects are moving in. Oh, that's and right. How does that work? Uh, so we're going to move two of the aspects in, and then one of them is going to change slightly because of the uh, because of the transition, right? So because of these like packages that are offered, because of people being lured little by little into the um, into the biodomes, uh, which one of the uh, the aspects we feel might change slightly? Well, I think gang economy will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like because that. People are going to biodome, and then they're they're relying less on the gangs to get some of their stuff. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, because the gangs are slow, like kind of being replaced by dependence on the biodomes is what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, like they're, they're yeah. getting the stuff in the biodome. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Does that sound good to you, Amber? Yeah. <laughs> not, the, not the improvised cybernetics. I mean the gang economy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these guys I'm just moving into H2. Okay. And, and then, then one of them evolves. Yeah, right? gang economy is going to evolve because, uh, because it's changed, right? Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So what is so gang economy now sounds like it's like biodome uh, work or dependence or how can we put that biodome dependency? Yeah, we're becoming less self sufficient. Or? Yeah, we're becoming less self sufficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less autonomous, loss of autonomy. Does that sound good? We can always rework that later if we find it that way. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so, so Jay, sorry for cutting off your turn before. Uh, oh no, I'm I'm still thinking about gang economy and trying to kind of wrap my mind to make sure I understand it. So it's sort of like instead of having this economy based on favors now, we have an economy based on actual economy. Is that or like? Well, we get more and more stuff. Like from the biodomes, as more and more people start working there, it sounds like. So we're not fully reliant on each other. So right? it's like there's less scarcity and there's more like kind of independent sources because like any person could go into the dome and get some resource and get some butter, mm -hmm. right? And like you would. I would have say I would say not any, but like more people, and so the gangs are like losing their mm -hmm. power. Yeah, I like exactly. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so can we reword that because? To something just slightly more specific, the loss of economy, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Like, what about what about weakening gangs? I love that. Yeah, weakening mm -hmm. gangs. Perfect. Weakening gangs. Here we go. All, All right. right. Done and done. Uh, so, what what was your uh, what's what's the next uh, word we're going to define? All right. So. Uh, Sorry, my card is movement is having issues. Maybe you can move this card. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so environmental feature. I feel like we should come up with a term for the biodome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we actually haven't really talked about them in character, so that's it's fine, yeah. Yeah, we have like the salt plains or whatever, but we don't have to. <laughs> I love have the salt them. plains. The salt plains are a terrible place, is all we Yeah, know. don't go there. Yeah. Can I also. Suggest that the salt isn't just salt. It's like the mat, like crushed over the centuries, like crushed up particles of like machine and stuff. Oh yeah, it's totally like very chemical and like there's a yeah. lot of yeah. So it's not like yeah. We just call the salt planes. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. All right. So which uh, which aspect are you going to tie that to? Uh oh shoot, we still have to tie to an aspect. Um, that is an excellent. Question. Well, I mean, um, the, the weakening gangs. I guess the weak, the weakening gangs is kind of the obvious one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, All right. So yeah, what do people start calling these biodomes after this like growth and dependency towards them? I guess. Um, so is the actually just to clarify, is the idea that this card is something that um, is this term starts evolving now in this age, or has uh, up to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but since it's if we tie it to weakening gangs, then I think that would imply that it's something that's developing now. So I feel like but... we should probably tie it to the protozoa, actually, and like they're oh. to be protected from the sun. Because so it's this is an old just... term that we used, like the protozoa yeah. and the not the sunny area and the not sunny area. Yeah, like the protected area where things were chill and like. Ah, so those they, are also. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. What did they? What What did we say that they all had that allowed them to? Like be protected from the. I mean, they have the dome. 
We have the dome, right. Okay. Which like filters out, I think, the UV. Yeah. Now yeah. we right. said this is a name that the outsiders called the dome or the insiders called the dome or everybody it's, call it by the I think it's a term that we, the outsiders, mm, call yeah, it. Yeah, we call it that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what do you guys think? What if it's something to do with like sun uh, again? Um, that seems like to be our like most important feature of this world. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Eskimos right. have a million words for snow kind of thing. Like every word is a word that yeah. is sun. Do a sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like maybe to do with UV. Like, like, like we are the UV and they are the not UV. They're the nuve or something. I don't know. The or the crib. Like crib. Crib, because like they're like all babies. Like they never have to like evolve. Yeah, and like, we consider yeah. ourselves self-sufficient. Yeah, it could, be, it could be the cradle in in in. The, I love that. Like a land of plenty. It is like a very yeah. That has so many meanings. I love that. Okay, yeah. it's the cradle. Yeah, and it's also like very slightly creepy for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Cradle has a creepy <laughs> like a cradle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that is that is perfect. Creepy for no reason is the right way to put that, right? It's like <laughs> exactly the type of word you would use in a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Like, why Why did they use that word? Why it's is it creepy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, awesome. I'll write that down. Uh, what's the prompt? A dangerous climb. A dangerous climb? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, well, let's see. I feel if you are in the scene and doing something physical, it would more likely be with um not with Sukarnox. I feel like it would probably be with Navita again. That sounds that Navita. sounds how, yeah. do, how do I pronounce your name? Yeah. Navita? Navita. All right. Um all right. So what, what kind of a climb are you thinking of then? Are you actually climbing one of the one of the cradles or I mean that seems straightforward. Yeah let's sure let's go climb the outside of the cradle and kind of check it out. Something? Yeah. Yeah, we're climbing over, we're climbing up to some part of the cradle where we can like kind of break in and steal a bunch of stuff. Does that work for you? Sorry, my internet just did like a cool little super glitch thing for a while. <laughs> um, sorry. So uh, you and I are going to break into the cradle? Yeah, how does that sound? I'm a pro. I love this. Yes. Right. Love breaking. <laughs> Some casual DNA. Mm -hmm. Got an inventory, you know? <laughs> so you must do this every couple clicks, huh? Yeah, I've been to some good places. I'm uh, looking forward to checking out this space, though. And corporations are taking my market share. I'm going to go back what's rightfully mine. I could say the same. What are you hoping to find in here? Truth? Yeah. Place to sabotage. See plenty of opportunities. You do, do you? Yeah. Have you been to the water collection site? They collect water in one place? I didn't do my voice. They collect water in one place. <laughs> Not very smart, right? <laughs> all right. All right. Or, sorry, there you go. We target the entire cradle oh, oh, from, from a single site. Say that again. Sorry. Can we target the entire cradle from a single site? If you're going after their water, potentially. Yeah. Rem. Rem. What's that? I wouldn't worry about it. Well, it looks like I'm trusting you to guide me then. It looks like a what? It looks like I'm trusting you to guide me then. Oh, yeah. Uh, why don't we 
to just take some samples and uh, come back. Done. Right. All right. Delightful. Just bring it, just go. So are you actually going to like poison their water supply or what's going <laughs> on? Off these seeds before like the key moment. Like I still don't know what the four spells were. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's inquiring minds need to know. <laughs> Did we poison the water supply of the bio of the cradles? Why do also, we what four spells? Why do we find out in the next scene if we poison yeah. them? Yeah. All right. Let's let's see. Well, you're going next, so you'll tell us what word is going to happen. Oh, okay. Um, I actually like this one a lot. Mm -hmm. Wait, where did it go? Oh, pronoun. pronoun. Us, you, them. The abstract ways we group ourselves, one another. We have a special way to refer to some in the isolation. What is the new pronoun? How do we use it? Why is it important to who we are? I really want something because of this new development to differentiate those who have truck with the cradle and I love those that. who are like not okay with doing stuff with the cradle. So it's like us versus I love that. Or them. I think them because, you know, we talk about otherizing, so a word for the other. Ah, um, so it's like, it's the people who don't interact with the cradle have a, have yeah, a specific... The do interact with the cradle. Yeah. Uh, I'm like traditionalist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in scrounging stuff from the salt plains and not from the cradle. Um, so those people are are uh, them, uh, and so the word the word uh, it could be something to do with the cradle. Uh, I don't want to use the word baby, or something. That sounds silly. Mm -hmm. uh, fetus, I don't know. Could no. Uh, it sounds. It sounds no. Because uh, yeah. sure, we have to work it quickly into a sentence, right? Like. Yeah. Like, what about like something like sphere, or I don't know. Like people in the domes, right? Um, well, but it needs to be a pronoun too, right? So it, it is a like, pronoun, right? Yeah. I mean, it could be something like cray for the cradle, right? Um, I don't know where cray's going. What if, what if it's dull? Was it? Dull? Dull. Dull. dull? dull. Like syllabic L, so no vowel in between. It's like dull. Dull. So let's see, let's try to use this in the sentence. So. <laughs> Dull are what, always what talking the, about the wonders of the cradle. Do not trust Dull. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Okay. Let's do that. D-L. <laughs> oh, my God. OK. All right. So just, sorry, just to clarify, these are the people in the cradle exclusively. No, these are the people from our gangs and stuff who start dealing with the cradle. The cradle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, these are intermediaries or converts? These are more, I, these are, so this, for example, um, um, Saxon is not a dull because she steals from the yeah, cradle. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. someone who starts working in the cradle and starts trading yeah. with them is a, a yeah. is part of the dull. But you just plot into their shit. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like if, you, is, if, you, if you steal from them, that's fine. Then you're not bought in, exactly. If you're like aligned with them and playing by their rules, you're dull. Yeah, yeah, you're like yeah. corrupted by the, uh, the cradle. Yeah. Um, okay. So the scene. I've had a scene with each of you. Um, what if uh, it's a scene? Where, suggestions, anyone? Uh, let's see. My guess is Evan will probably be dull. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we can. Okay. Then I'd like to do a scene with Saxon. <laughs> All right. That's because good. I, now, you know, the two alliances I have. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's like, yeah. Because yeah, I guess you need to talk about someone in the third person to yeah, use the pronoun. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Saxon, I know you mislike coming to my laboratory, so I thank you profusely for making the expedition I actually come here all the time. What I wanted <laughs> to talk about was dull and how the F, 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 R, F, T, what were they? FX. 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 <laughs> and how the FX have become, have joined the ranks of dull. And I feel since our last discussion wasn't concluded, I would like to 
wholeheartedly offer my help in toppling dull and the FX. Good. They can High stay in their cradle. What was that? High time something happens to dull. They can stay in their cradle for as many clinks yeah. as they like. Yeah. <laughs> we do not need them. We do not need them at all. Dull, dull. We do not need dull. <laughs> we do not need dull at all. That's a good scene, I think. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Right, very nice. <laughs> that's delightful. Oh you um, mean delightful? Delightful. You mean yeah. REM? Uh, yeah, it's, it's very REM. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, and so just to make sure that we uh, end in time, I think we will have to do like three H2 and three H3 uh, rounds right. rather than four and four. Uh, but I think that should be perfectly fine. Uh, cool. Uh, oh, and I'll deal both of you H3 cards. Um, cool. Are we adding Dole to the map? Oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Closing ranks. Or I will forget. <laughs> yeah, Dole. Closing ranks against all Dole. Yeah, well, DLE, I guess. I would say just DL works. DL, yeah. yeah. Okay. Pro I'll just I'll just say pronoun. All right, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, Amber, do you have uh, have one uh, a word picked out? Yeah, I think um, I think money. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's time for some money. Yeah, about yeah. time. So I think. Um, I think what's going on here is like, you know, we used to operate with like Samis and what we had. And I feel like we had more of a like barter economy. And now that the corporations are like sinking their teeth in, they're kind of forcing us into like a currency economy. Um, ah, yeah. Ooh, I like that a lot. I am not a fan of. Oh yeah, because you, you you have to you had all this money in the old yeah. system. It's like having Confederate money, or like it's just yeah. worthless. Yeah, and I feel like if you've bought into currency, you're dull. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's uh, a uh, yeah, 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 definitely the manifestation of surrender. It's perfect. I also like this narrative twist where, like, kind of, I felt like Davida was like the winner of the last age in every scene. Like, she clearly <laughs> won that scene, and Comment. like now she's like the most like in trouble from the start of the events. Very true. Yeah. All right, that that's great. Um, let's see. So, which aspect are we tying that to? Is that also the weakening gangs, or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be yeah, that sounds great. Uh, all right, so let's see what what can we call that. We already have this theme of cradle, um, with with the uh, with the biodome. So I wonder if there's any more of that theme that can be. I like rattle, or is that too much? What are you thinking, Amber? Well, I think um, I think you know they created the name of the currency, and we have like a slang iteration for it. I love that. Ah, uh, so like something. Yeah, yeah. It's theirs. They name it. And they would name it something like beautiful and very well marketed, um, like leaves. Mm -hmm. Like leaves, it's so prosperous. That's so good. Yeah, or like so florins. Or... Yeah, or like petals. Oh, I like petals. Petals. Yeah. If we really want to be in the same, way, we can call them tulls. <laughs> tulls and tulls. <laughs> Let's say they call their money petal. Like, yeah. no, just petal. And um, let's see. And then what is What is it like pits? pits? Petals is pits. Because petal becomes shortened to pet, and then we, we just have a pit. Or like the idea that they, they enunciate the word tea like petal. So it's something around, like, it's so we like talk like about. Something. Um, uh, someone's what suggesting the pits. Pits is good, but eta is just without the consonants. Eta. Ta. ta. Just ta. Yeah. How many ta? ta? I feel like it needs to be trashed more. This is a. Not we need more. to mangle it a little bit more. 
Mm. Let's see, how can we mangle petals more? Petal, nettle. Pete. Pete. Or go back to the notion of palms, like, because that was like our original economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, right, the palm, that is an interesting idea. Just call it the, uh, Although we reuse everything, so maybe that's a I like pea. Like you got some pea? <laughs> like, oh, I, I, I think like I, I couldn't really take that one seriously. Okay, okay. Um, and there's also real, I mean, England uses tea. tea, right? Yeah, tea would be good. Tea? Yes. Yeah, cause, cause, uh, because of the enunciation. Right, yeah, because yeah, oh, like, tea. Like, at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst part of the word, I mean, like, yeah, that. Tea, okay. Oh, that's great. That's our words are getting progressively shorter and shorter. <laughs> like at first we had words like and rev, and we thought there were only one syllable. But then we had bull, which has no vowels, and then we have one word. I think my new aim is whenever I play this game, at least one word must have no vowels. <laughs> Done. Well, you are you are double winning this game in that case. <laughs> All right. So who who should have a conversation? Oh, and what's uh, let's see the prompt on that one is. Oh, someone suggested Pete's. So that was smart. Yeah, Pete's is good too. Uh, what money can buy here? So, what? Uh, who who will have a conversation about what money can buy? What what tea can buy here? Since uh since. Evan is a dull. Evan knows what money can buy here for sure. Ooh, yeah, Evan's yeah. got some tea. Yeah. I want to see. Oh, I want to see the encounter between Evan and Sukarnox, where Evan is trying to buy something and Sukarnox refuses to sell it. Oh my god! Did you do that? Right, because that's where we've been leading to. Cool. All right. Yeah, maybe Evan tries to buy something from Sukarnox with tea, and Evan and Sukarnox is not having it. <laughs> We have. I have seen this card is covering the board. I don't know if you do. Hmm. Oh yeah, the 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 money card. Yeah. Yeah, it's just in the middle, so the stream can see it right now. I see. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. take it. I'll it's take it down. Sorry, my bad. All right. So what money can buy here? Uh, let's see. I have to remember my words a little bit. How Sukarnox. Pleasant to see you. Quite pleasant. I've been working those scents into my different works, and How they've gotten quite a lot of attention. Attention from Dull, I hear. Dull have tea. We need to do what we can to to survive from time to time. Certainly, there's nothing wrong with. I a thought, little tea on the side. I thought you, of all people, understood the purity of the sleep. I understand the purity of the sleep more than you could ever imagine, Sukarnox. But in order to make more of the holograms, in order to spread the word of the sleep, we need to be able to broadcast. We need to be able to get it to more and more people. And the way to do that is with tea. Evan, you must excuse me. I have a great many surgeries to perform. You remember those, I hope, and haven't let dull wipe your memories of what makes us who we are. I'm sorry, but I will have to postpone the rest of our meeting. I hope you have fun in the cradle. And I just won't, like, dismiss you. You're the worst. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, great. <laughs> oh, I'm like, is that you, Jay, in chat? The Dill has not yeah. tea. <laughs> Dill have tea. Yep. All right, that's great. Uh, okay, let's move on to H three. Uh, so now we can all uh, discard a card if you'd like to discard a card. Oh my God, that's amazing! Least comprehensible sentence. Dill have tea. 
That that is <laughs> high up there it. in terms of dialect overall and intelligible sentences. <laughs> but that's language, right? Like it, 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 apparently so. That's what happened. <laughs> I don't right. want to discard a card. Okay, I guess I don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to discard. Uh, let me uh, shuffle things around a little bit. I will discard one. <laughs> and, okay, so I won the J. This one. Oh yeah, and, and it goes to the bottom. I can see mine originally. I have to scroll down to see the H three card. If anyone else has that issue, I have my all time favorite card, and I'm probably not going to play it. Oh no! Oh well, you'll get one more turn. Okay, so and we'll do three turns. Um, and the uh, prompt for this one: What was foreshadowed has come to pass. The end of the isolation is near. There is no escaping it. A new portable corporate biosphere pops up just a few blocks from the solar slugs. <laughs> the luxurious culture and cool, easy temperatures seduce many away. Who stays and who leaves? How do those who leave change in look and behavior? What? All right. So let's see. Um, all right. So more and more are getting seduced away. So I really want to know what happens to all three of you because you all seem to be holding back. Quite a bit from Bill. I am the old guard. I was built on a foundation that cannot exist. It's, about, um, it's not in my. Mind. So you're just going out with the ship. Um, I I mean I am like literally the most resourceful person ever, mm -hmm. right? So like, I'm not struggling exactly. You know, I'm just not joining. All right. Dying of my own soul. <laughs> All right, sounds great. So which one of these do we think is going to change with respect to this? The cybernetics, the protozoa, or the weakening gangs? Hmm. So, I mean, I'm tempted to say the gangs get, like, not, like, super unweak, but we could, that, that seems the same, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I feel like the gangs are the same. Yeah, something, something either about the protozoa or the cybernetics, I think, need to change yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe relying on cybernetics now yeah because the the biome is right here too there's another one right yeah so they get proper cybernetics not like janky improvised priest surgical cybernetics really oh no i like i like that a lot all right yeah so sukarnox's clan the magician clan is like losing power i love that actual cybernetics does that sound good to you amber yeah, yeah. Are, are, so it's like it's like you cross out the word improvised and it's just cybernetic, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. actual cybernetic. Yeah. Are yeah. your are your people are your cybernetic techs like going out? Are they? I think because pe there fewer away. people are going into the wild to fetch them. Fewer people are coming to us me and my cult for like surgery the the whole the the holiness of going into the salt plains has become a lot less holy and yeah. like it's like not cool it's not it's cool dude the mystical part out and that's too integral to you guys to like convert yeah like, like or once maybe the we jump ship like we our gang went where the where the privilege and the easy went and after Ooh. all that talk between the two of us all that time like i bailed on you oh my god Whoopee. so i burned one bridge and then the other bridge burned itself meanwhile i'm pretty sure um pretty sure novita has like a newfound respect for you oh new alliance that's cool yeah all right delightful all right, so uh, I'll go first on this one. And um, let's see. I think we definitely do need... Uh, so I'm going to do disuse, I think. Um, and this is a oh, word which was once common, is gradually forgotten. Uh, perhaps re re the reason we spoke about it has faded away, or we've intentionally left it behind. Uh, pick the previously defined words, explain why we no longer use it. Um, I mean, 
dusk is changing, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think that only makes sense with the dusk. With the, the situation. Dusking. I know it can't. It can't really exist anymore, right? So I've decided the left hand represents cybernetics. The right hand represents dusk. Oh, I didn't even notice that they were different. Oh. That's pretty great. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so dust is going to be our word that uh, no. that we're going to get rid of. <laughs> and uh, okay, most people about this word, guys. In the conversation, explore the disuse. Uh, in the conversation, as new conventions. So let's see. So dust no longer being used. Certainly, Sharon. Right, like certainly Sukarnox is going to be very important for you. It, it, that's the obvious choice. You may want to have it the not obvious choice. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's whatever you pick. Let's see. Also, says Novita hasn't been in the scene for a while. Yeah. So I mean, if we're exploring the new alliance between Novita and Sukarnox, that could be a scene. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, yeah, because I I feel like Dusk is such it, it, it like I, I don't think we can explore the disuse of this without having Sukarnax in it in some way. Um and Novita I think would be a, a great foil to play against that with, right? To see like what your reaction to that word is at this point. Like maybe a second scavenger has died. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because Novita oversees like a lot of people who were dusking previously, right? So this is a yeah. a concept that you're always dealing with. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you think there's like a, a like sort of a funeral ritual, and you and I are like some of the only people to show oh. up? Oh. Yeah. We're the dusking ritual anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and new conventions is the prompt. So like uh, the fading of that old convention would be an appropriate thing. Thank cool. you, Novita, for heeding to the old ways still. It is most, most comforting. One might even say REM to see the old ways still practiced. I know we have had our differences and I'm glad we can put them aside. I ever would have guessed in a million years, you'd be the one rejecting the tea. Not joining the doll. What but made you think I would ever be dull, Novita? I know we have had disagreements, but I hope you never thought I would dullify. I'm not saying I can predict anything. The friends we've lost in this. True, Saxon, I was sure would stay away from the cradles. But Saxon is now one of the doll. Wait, is Saxon one? So I, I'm a doll. Okay, good. Okay. Dull. Some's going left and right. Again, I I am always sincere during the funeral of the the dusked. You do know that, and I do give my heartfelt sorrow to your clanmate who dusked. I know we do not use that term as much anymore, but it is important to remember that they have gone to the great sleep. I don't have to agree with your words, but I appreciate your actions and as a token of respect, I've uh, I've got some things you might be interested in. And I have managed to acquire some cheese. <laughs> oh. I've oh. <laughs> I, I never realized that dairy provokes such emotional reactions from me. Like cheese. <laughs> right. butter, cheese keeps better than butter, I think. So, you know. Yeah. It's so right on, though, because, like, the resources that a fucking cow takes, like, 
the sun to grow the grass and the water for this huge creature and then cow eating beef just to get the like oh yeah <laughs> that was wonderful i love how you're trading like we're like supplies and cheese i love that that was a great <laughs> ending <laughs> yeah. yeah that was great so that cheese. was rev we got yeah, some, yeah. that was real rev yeah all right jay are you ready to go uh yeah sure um okay i'm gonna play this card after all um it is evolve my favorite card part um and it left i don't know where it is okay uh so we it's uh play choose a word and um move it to an aspect on the current age and describe how the word use of the word evolves mm -hmm. i'm just gonna move it to where, where stream can see it so I feel like we need to evolve the word salt me, guys. <gasps> oh, man. Um, and I see two directions, and I'm not sure. So let me toss out the two options and see what you guys think. So one is, um, I don't know if this is cheating, but we keep it on recent gangs. Mm -hmm. um, and we say that salt me is like now the word for the old guard, like people who like insist on the old system. Oh, so you it's know, the duel and the Samis. Yeah, exactly. On the other hand, we could move it to actual cybernetics because Salmi ori like originated with debt, right? And all debt, like the, the root of all debt was cybernetics, right? So like now we could say like, you know, Salmi's are now a word that's used by the dull, like, or by dull, um, to refer to like people who have, like people who cybered with you, right? People who adopted like the same cyber implant because it was cheaper and more accessible and like, oh, check it out. We both have cyber shoulders. Like we're salty. <laughs> right, so we can either totally desecrate the fuck out of the word mm -hmm. salty or like make it like really old guard. Uh, so I like both. I think the first one has more conflict potential. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, to yeah. me, they both sounded kind of like they, they could both be happening. Like, they didn't sound, like, incompatible. Uh, did, is that inaccurate, Jerry? Or I think they're... I think they're the spirit of the card. I don't know. I mean, it's your card. But, like, I feel like it's incompatible. Like, and we should just either, like, have Salmi's be a word that used to have meaning and no longer does, or, like, used to have meaning and, like, has a more extreme version of that meaning. Oh, yeah, yeah. It should this still definitely have meaning. Um, and I also, mean, it I, used to be on gang economy, right? So yeah. if we move it to weakening gangs, that's still changing the aspect, yeah. right? So, yeah. and I, I think it could, we haven't had this. We've had a lot of scenes where we like denigrate the dull. We haven't had a scene where dull talk about us. That's true. Right? Like if Saxon and Evan are yeah. talking yeah. as dull. Yeah, we finally have two dull to, to talk about, multiple dull. You done with that, Amber? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. We're moving Salmi to weakening gangs again. All, All right. right. Salmi are the old guard. That's good because I actually would feel really, really sad if like Salmi wasn't <laughs> just like referred to some random shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll I'll put it old guard. Hey, it's so funny how we're feeling emotional about words. It's lovely. Yeah. All these guys. All right. The, All right. The oh, my friend Mary just joined. Hey, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the tides of change pull on us. Let's see, so what what would we be getting pulled to do? I mean, we're integrating more and more with Dole, I'm sure, um, both West Saxon. What what kind of role do you occupy you know, in the new in the cradle now? Probably like enforce something enforcement, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a bouncer at a club or something. Yeah, like something totally random and like. She's like, yeah. Yeah, do you want to? Like wanna... something super gentrified like that, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah like people, like, at, like, like a club now. at like a gentleman's private club kind of thing, not like a dance club. No, I, I think it's something like really public, like that like any rich person can walk into, right? And now we just like work for their security and like we've totally sold out. What if, okay, well, we talk about how like growing plants is hard, right? Amber said like growing plants and, and stuff to feed the cows. What if it's an orchard bouncer like there are these like orchard gardens where rich people can loll about and you're like i like bouncer. clubs though because i like the sense of decadence let's just run it okay out. cool yeah. Yeah, yeah i love clubs yeah i would not have thought of that um all right and let's see evan i'm sure like evan might be um like 
supplying some different holograms and stuff for the club, right? So yeah. maybe you have to get in and like yeah, we have Yeah, because we still there. live outside the dome. We just like work inside the dome all day now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, oh, I'm sorry, inside the cradle. Inside the, the cradle, cradle. No. exactly. Evan, is your artistic focus still like personal fashion or is it like interior design in this booming economy? <laughs> I think I think Evan's definitely branched out. Yeah, there's definitely interior design. There's definitely like mass producible fashion. There is definitely different different things like that that are more and more like generic and less personal. Are um, you like you're like a design like maven, you know, megalo person now? Like I I don't think anything like quite to that level. I think it's much more modest, right? It's just like you know buying Evan off with you know, some modicum of dignity. Um, not like any particular, like, celebrity or anything like that. It's kind of like how I'm, I'm seeing it, at least. Um, cool. So, um, Saxon? Evan, my, uh, my friend, are you heading into the cradle next clink? Or are you, just, sorry, are you heading into the club next clink? Yes, yes, uh, I will. Uh, I am on the list, right? You are always on the list, of course. Well, as long as you're working, I'm always on the list. That's not what the last... You know, you remember what happened three clinks ago. Well... I spent a lot of tea on that. As business gets better, oh, my, I felt, my fellows will be working more and more. All right, Saxon. Well, how have you have you been seeing any of the uh, any of the others around? You know, I can't help but wondering what what's happened to some of them. It's been so long since I've seen Sukarnox and Novita. I think the Samis keep out. They do what they've always done, you know. The other day, I think I, I saw a few of the. I'm um, heading back out to the Salt Plains. The salt plains. They still have yeah, to go right. to the salt plains. They choose to go to the salt plains. It's rough for them or something. No, it wasn't that long ago that I remember hearing stories about you climbing the cradle. Were those true? Shh. <laughs> Saxon, they know. They do not know. <laughs> I am respectable now, look. Mm -hmm. You're quite respectable. Anyways, if you see any of the Saw Muse again, just, you know, I don't know. I think about them sometimes, I guess. Maybe if you have some spare tea, you can pass it their way. I have never run a charity, and I do not plan to start now, let me tell you. <sighs> All right. But I do. Oh, I miss. Although I do miss fencing with Evan. <sighs> yeah, me too. But you, you're the tradesman now. I make a living. It's uh, it's nothing like Novita used to be. <clears throat> <sighs> oh, you're Evan. Sorry. <laughs> As the tea flows, I. As the tea flows. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. So let's move on to the last turn. Let's just go on here. Okay. Uh, cool. So, Sharon? Oh, it's my turn uh, to pick a word. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was on the video, I'll go back to my cards. Okay. Um, okay, this one, okay, I could do this one. It's a little, um, it's a little, it's a little um, obvious, but you know, in role-playing games, embrace the obvious, right? So, yep, the obvious. Yep. Um, let's do misunder, uh, yeah, we ascribe new meaning to old words in confusion spread. Make, pick a previous defined word, explain, uh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Did I draw the wrong one? Yeah, I wanted to draw perception. Sorry. Um, I picked the wrong one. I'm sorry. I wanted to draw perceptions. 
and misunderstandings. Can we put that back in my deck? I don't know. Oh, uh, um, I'll this, just, is, this is your last turn anyway. Yeah, so. I'll just flip it. Yeah. Okay, so perceptions. Uh, using the word carries weight. When we say it, people form an image and it changes what they think of us. Play on a previously defined word. Explain how using the word changes others' perceptions of the speaker. Um, in context, explore the perception. Okay, so I think the obvious one would be dull. Like, if you use the word yeah. dull, you're a super traditionalist and you are making a statement. Um, is that a good one or is that too obvious and too similar to what we've been doing already? No, I think that's I think that's a great one. Let, let me just toss this out in case you're interested. How would you yeah. feel about attaching it to Rem as an interpretation, as like a philosophy of the religion of like, I actually like that a lot because that it's the same idea. It's it shows that you are an adherent of the old ways. We don't want to because we've been doing a lot of stuff with Dull and not a lot with Rem, so I like that. Mm -hmm. Are people that's in the cradle sleeping better? I mean, I think so. Oh. Yeah. The, I the think the, just get rev all the time. I think the cradle, the the biodome is also um can also darken, so they actually get proper hours of sleep. And they don't have all the stress and everything anymore. Oh, that really fits nicely with the fact that dusk is no longer a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that. Oh my God. Oh my God. All these connections we're making, guys. We're so cool. We're just so cool. Okay. Um. So we're playing perceptions on REM, and it reveals that you are old-fashioned and adhering to the old ways. Oh, yeah, perfect. Using okay. all our words, guys. Which is kind of a pre like Saxon used that not too long ago. Yeah. Th does that say anything about you, or is that like before this change started taking place? I guess we'll see. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, and shaping our own future, and that one may have outsiders. If you want to have outsiders in that conversation. Yeah, shaping our own future. Um, I mean, it sounds like that would be with um, Amber's character again. Mm -hmm. Novita? But, but yeah, with Novita. But I don't know if that would make us use the word in a way that changes others' perceptions of us. So maybe it's with, oh, could it be three people? Maybe it's with Novita and Evan, maybe. Sure. Because Evan was like, I miss them, I miss them. You know, maybe Evan deigned to come by. Oh no. I don't think this is gonna go well for Evan. But we can totally do it. We can I, totally I have do it. I'm curious about this confrontation. Yeah. It goes well for Evan and uh Novita looks like old fogey. Yeah. Yeah, it might go really well for Evan because Evan might have his posse with uh, their posse with them. Um Evan just feels bad for you two. He was right, stuck I mean, behind. Is Evan just dropping by on Novita, like out of a, a, is it like a pity nostalgia visit? I think so. Every so often, Novita or Evan probably like you know goes by, <laughs> and especially if Sukarnax and Novita are together, right? It's like, oh, well, maybe it's a nice time to you know hang out, see see how they're Ooh, doing. Maybe we're we're partaking in a really quaint ritual, like sniffing scents or something. Oh no. Yeah, that, that sounds great. But... That Evan is like, who does that anymore? We have like, we have actual smells and stuff. We have actual roses, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that's too good. We're smelling bug spray that's rose scented. All right, all right. That that sounds that sounds pretty great. You know, a ritual of like sharing smells as, uh, like you know, you'd go to someone's house and have tea, but we don't actually yeah. have. That water economy so we just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we are sharing these smells uh, over like some um sludge cookies yeah right because it's scented sludge cookies like that's right like, right right, right. The, that's the only thing we eat the, that's you enhance the, the sludge cookies with this scented bug spray that's delightful all right let's see so um so you're you're like in your office or where would you be doing this that i might be well, I, Novita, it's not like Amber wanted to be in Novita's lair rather than mm -hmm. in uh, my lair. Yeah, that sounds great. I, yeah, I think my my more personal space is open to a greater public mm -hmm. than. Yeah, well, mine's a lab, so it's like kind of closed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm accustomed to like having guests and negotiating meetings and hosting yeah. and stuff. So you're at my hovel. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. I think start every one of my sentences with thank you, but whatever. 
thank you for inviting me to your abode and for these delightful sludge cookies and scents. However, did you acquire them in so few clinks? Uh, you're muted, Amber. Amber, that we can hear that. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I have my ways, Evan. It's really good to see you. You look beautiful. So kind. Oh. Oh. Okay. oh uh, Wait, you, you're all there, right? I, I didn't realize Evan was there. I thought he was coming later. It doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we can say that I'm just walking in, yeah. for example, right? And Novitz is just like very casually. Yeah. I thought I I uh, smelled something familiar while I was walking while I was walking past, and I just thought I'd come see if it was what I thought it was. Evan, do you remember the rem that we would get from these scents? The, the REM. Don't tell me you have forgotten everything <sighs> in the old ways. Sukarnox, so I haven't oh. forgotten, but I've, I've moved past with some other folks. Yes, it was REM at some point, maybe, but, y you know, you can actually smell the flowers if you go into the dome. What do kids even say these days? What do they say inside? Yeah, I mean, I hear things are pretty rem in there. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. They say I think, good. I think the tea has gotten to you, Evan. The tea's gotten to me. The tea's gone to my head. Is that what you think? Is that what you think? You just what? is that what you were all just going to talk about? Carnox, don't you know the tea is good? Yeah, ah, the tea's real good. Good. I mean, you want to just want to just sit around here, eat some cookies, talk about dull over in the cradle, just a couple of samis, just having fun. Is that what you wanted this to be? Evan, why did you come here? I came because I wanted to see you again. I wanted to see you, and I wanted to see Novita. I wanted to see how you were doing, because I was worried about you. And clearly, to improve your sense of self-importance by seeing what these old, old fogies, what these old, um, the, what were the word, samis are up to, that's what it is, isn't it? Well, please, take a look. Take a look at us. I'm taking a look. I'm taking a breath. I'm bringing it. I'm taking it all in, Zucaranox. And none of it's surprising. I hope this fills you with good feelings. <laughs> oh, Kevin, when the tea runs dry, we got whatever you need. I know you're good for it. Real good. Real good. <laughs> I'm seen. <laughs> oh, oh, that was beautiful, you guys. That was a wonderful scene. I'm so sorry. Good. Real good. <laughs> good. I've never heard such a simple <laughs> word said with such disdain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so sad. All right. That's that's wonderful. All right, cool. So now the uh, the last moments or the aftermath of the isolation. The biosphere adjacent to the solar slums grows into many and is on the brink of becoming one large corporation under the umbrella of the original. It's now impossible to live in the slums without spending time in the biosphere because they've cut off supplies. In what ways have the two cultures melded? How have they changed each other? Is anything left of our solar slum culture? So, now I will take back all of the previous cards. All of this, we haven't actually talked about like who these corporations are, what their source of power and money and control. They're they're so powerful that they're like kind of like in the background control. Like we don't. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fairly genre appropriate. Of like, they're they're just corporations. They're just big and bad corporations. I don't know. Corporations at their own end. Yeah. 
And like, we're so minuscule. They don't even care about us. You know, like they don't bother with these slum people. Yeah. All right. So everyone gets one legacy card. Okay. And so for chat, uh, this is the uh, the very end of the game is when we do the legacy. Uh, so for this, everyone gets one card, uh, which has three prompts on it. And the very last thing you do in the game is you pick one of the three prompts and you give a short narrated epilogue. Uh, either it's a wrap up your story or the story of the isolation as a whole. Um, I'm not part of the with everyone. Let's see. Um, Sorry, I'm having trouble dealing with these last cards for some reason. You can draw if you want us to draw. Um, yeah, would you all mind drawing from the legacy back there? Oh, okay. We can and we get that. how many? One? Yeah, everyone gets one. A legacy deck, draw. We ran out of cards, apparently. Yeah, draw. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. out of cards. I'll be back in a sec. Oh, maybe it just needs to be shuffled. Let's see. Yeah, that was it. it. It just had been shuffled, I guess. And so uh, oh, rather okay. than deal from an unshuffled deck, it, it, you need to shuffle it. Okay, so I will draw again. Oh, I actually dealt everyone one. Oh, 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 sorry. Okay. I feel this will be similar to my death in the last game of, of this that I played. But that's fine. That's fine. Not an unusual way for it to go. All right. And these don't have to go in turn order. Uh, just as you find a prompt that speaks well, um, you, can, you can go with it. Um, so I have one that works, um, but I feel like it's it kind of would make more sense a little further down. But I'm happy to go first if, if people would like a little bit more time. So we're just like describing a snapshot, right? Yeah, either about your character or the isolation as a whole, whichever one you feel is more appropriate. Um, and so, yeah, I think I, I'll go. Um, and I think uh, Evan is... Uh, Heading back into that club where uh, Saxon works now, uh, and you know, kind of had a little head nod going, uh, and I think that uh, Evan sees this is like the big unveiling of something Evan's been working on for a really long time, and uh, there is all this dancing on stage, and um, there's this like one kind of like holographic flower that opens up. Uh, in the middle, and just the scent from it comes out <laughs> and starts overwhelming Aww. everything in the club. And yeah, it's 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 just one of those one of those scents that that reminded Evan of of you know the, the old times. Um, and uh, but is it, it a real scent, or does he actually use one of the old artificial? No, scents? it's it's like it's an, it's based on one of the old artificial scents, I think. Wow. But like this this whole moment, and Evan's kind of like looking at the at the flower, and you know the the kids are all just like dancing up on each other, right? They're, they're not even looking at it. Uh, but that's what's going on. Wow. All right. So who's what next? The, can you share the prompt? The Oh, like, a, a moment of deja vu. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is so sad, guys. Yeah. Who knew the game has dialect was sad? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I can go. Um. Uh, what I have is a hard decision made in secret. So, oh no! So, oh, no. Navita, um, Navita was fine as long as there was space not conquered by the biodome. 
Like as long as I have space for my resources, I can be resourceful. But once you take away all of my space, um, yeah, everybody, pretty much everybody has been absorbed uh, into the cradles by now. And everybody knows that, well, some high up people knew that I like my final card uh, was that I knew the salt flats were uh, harvestable uh, as a resource. You can, it's sort of like, like guano mining or something, <laughs> you know, like you're seeing it as the least interesting resource, but it's actually like more valuable than gold if you know what to do with it. So we're at the, we're at a point in time where like all of my old friends are now sort of like heading up the corporate world um, or are involved in the corporate world. And so they come to me and, uh, and convince me to lead this effort. So like in return for doing this and becoming a part of the corporation, I get you know, my own little slice and I get to be my own director and lead the crews and have a small bit of autonomy. Oh, you still you still get that little piece. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, at least you're still because they're still your salt planes under the auspices of the corporate now. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the corporation is like, you know, you know, my friends, my friends work there. What are you gonna do? Can I then go last as the last of the sun? Up to Jay. Uh, let's coordinate on this. So I have um, out of the ash a seedling sprouts. Um, uh -huh. So I'd like to do that. I can do, and it's up to you whether you think that's better third or fourth. I don't know. Mine's gonna be like tragic death. Okay, in that case, let, let me go last. Okay. <laughs> so um, okay, so mine is um, coming across the rubble and ruin. Aww. So. Uh, as there are very few Sami left, they're only the old people, the the ones who are like addled and agitated by the by the protozoa. Um, so um, I think um, Sukarnok Sukarnok doesn't go scavenging really. He used to as a when he was younger, but he doesn't anymore. But you know everything is changing. There's nothing left. Most of the territory is taken up. So he goes into the salt flats on his own um, and he like looks like, you know, the ruins and like with all where you'd scavenge and stuff and he looks around and he like, he isn't, he isn't scavenging though, which is weird. Um, he he um, walks, he like takes a look at everything cause nothing is the same back home. Like there's no one left in his lab. His cult has all left and stuff. No one's taking care of the lab. Um, and so the last thing he does, he turns around, he takes out his strigil, and he scrapes off all the protozoans. Oh, wow. uh, and then he lies down and closes his eyes as though he's about to take a nap. Oh. Uh, the last asami. The last sigh. That was very poetic. Again. You're totally the last <laughs> That was good. <laughs> All right. So what what will the oh what was the prompt on that one? Try oh, uh, rubble and ruin. Oh, coming across the rubble and ruin. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. And let's see the seedling. I have uh yeah out of the ashes seedling sprouts. Um, so I think there's like kind of two scenes in a row. And in the first one, um, there's a couple of um, Navita's scroungers, like the younger ones. Um, who are playing around in like the ruins of Sukarnov's lab, oh. and just like messing around and like you know they're they're scavengers, right? So it seems like they're just kind of scavenging, but they see in some stuff and they mess with it. Um, and then like their attention gets you know kind of caught up, and so they start spending more time with it. Um, and then later on, you see the two of them uh, on the far, far side of the salt plains, like heading out into the ruin where there isn't even, like beyond all of the cradles where like there isn't even anything to scavenge and there has never previously been a reason to go Just there. Like emptiness. Yeah, exactly. And like you see the two of them walking out and then kind of one of them pauses and kind of points at the, the sun and the other one like scavenges in their bag and pulls out this like little old metal tube and, um, 
whistle and pours out like a strange new fluid and kind of hands half of it to the other person and they like rub it on their face and then they chill out and keep walking and then and they toss the tube away and there's a little clink as well. Uh, oh my god i love that the last sound in the game is the clink that is that is pretty great all right wow. well that was dialect folks wow that was so fun, guys. Yeah, I had a wonderful time playing with you all. Oh, yeah, someone's commenting about the clink in chat. <laughs> yeah, gotta have clink. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I had a really wonderful time playing with you all. Um, and uh, thank you all uh, in chat, too, for coming and watching. Um, this, uh, so, Dialect um, released uh, about a little under a year ago by now. Um, Yep, little book, uh, a little little book and deck of cards, and uh, it's all we're thorny games. Uh, me and Catherine Himes uh, are thorny games. Oh, and a bag. Yep, you got the collector's edition, as Amber clearly has. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's all available on our website, thornygames.com, and uh, we are releasing the Roll Twenty integration, uh, which will let you play online. Uh, just as we were playing, we were zoomed in on one very particular part of the board, um, just so we weren't moving around constantly. But um, you know, when you're playing on your own, you can kind of go around the board much easier. Um, but uh, that's available for pre-order now uh, on Roll20, and uh, it'll be uh, going live on April 26th. Um, so yeah, uh, if there's no other questions from chat, I know we have uh, at least one East Coaster playing with us who is uh, desperately uh, ready to go to bed, I'm sure. Uh, so thank you all so much for, for playing and everyone for uh, for being in chat. And I'll hang out in uh, in chat for a little bit longer in case anyone has questions. Thank you so, for running this, Akan. No, yeah, no, 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 thank, thank you all so much for playing. Yeah. Meet you, Amber and Jay. Amber, I realize we actually have worked together because you edited my stuff. It took me a sec to realize. I did, actually. My other, my book. Oh, okay. Uh, the other secret orbits, yeah. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and it's wonderful to meet you, Jay. Yeah, I have been hearing so much about you. It's nice to finally get to play together. <laughs> it was really nice. Um, well, very, very, very good things. <laughs> Um, well, I think it was so fun Very to play good. with y'all. Uh, it was fun, and I think we made a beautiful, tragic, wonderful story together. Yeah. Exactly. Good night, songies. Cool. All right. Yeah. Yep. Good night. Good night, all songies. Have a have a very rum evening. All right. <laughs>